Before I start the video I would like to invite you to my website or Patreon, in both I upload content continuously, more than 25 hours of different audiobooks a day, except Saturdays. Links in the description. Is Thor still not here? Sif asked Coulson anxiously. Although I didn't understand the importance of that guy against such a formidable enemy, it will take some time before he arrived here. Coulson said casually. Coulson knows that their current situation didn't look good at all. No weapons of his could do anything against the destroyer, and the only four people in the scene who could at the very least hold his own against the destroyer were already wounded. If he was lucky enough to survive the destroyer, what he will see later got to be worse than this, as he expected, the destroyer will advance to the city and destroyed everything in it. The shattering beam that the destroyer shot out from the gap of its face was insanely powerful. Not even a tank could withstand that attack, as the tank would simply crumble after the rays hit it. But Coulson immediately held his breath and waited for the right time to attack, he waited for the moment where destroyer just shot its powerful beam and immediately shot the destroyer with a bazooka strike through the gap in its face. Coulson guessed that Destroyer's weak point must be the gap in its head, as there was no other place that received any damage from their attack so far. Fortunately for Coulson, his guess was right. The Destroyer's head immediately blew out, decapitated. Is it over? Coulson said with disbelief. Sif and Vol's tag on the side immediately walked toward the Destroyer to confirm the end of the Destroyer's terror, but Coulson's happy dance had to wait. Sif immediately shouted for everyone to retreat because the destroyer was still alive. The destroyer immediately stood up and put its head back on its place, while shooting the beam towards Coulson. The warrior three felt helpless, this was much worse than fighting the giants of Jotunheim with Thor earlier. But a cocky voice was immediately heard in the sky. Hey Coulson, am I late to the party? You look like hammered already. Tony said playfully. No, thank goodness you are finally here. Now, I will leave this lump of iron to you then. Coulson said with a sigh of relief. Coulson knew that Tony had become more responsible for his surroundings after the near-death experience fighting against his adversaries earlier. So, Coulson believed that Tony would be able to do something against this indestructible destroyer. Well, the fact that Tony showed so much interest in the silver armor from the video call that Coulson made earlier was also taken into consideration. But the destroyer didn't wait for them to finish talking, as it suddenly shot out another beam towards Coulson. Tony immediately grabbed Coulson and flew to safety. When this is all over, I want the research right to that thing. Tony said towards Coulson. Although I can't make the call for that decision, I think Director Fury wouldn't refuse your request. But I think it's still too early for you to ask for that. Coulson said casually. Well, I had some new toys that I want to test out too. If this thing really was as durable as it might seem, it will provide me with a good amount of data. Tony said excitedly. Tony immediately flew back toward the destroyer to attack the destroyer with science-based technological weapon, Coulson wondered if Tony's weapon could really make any difference. Tony has always ended up in some sort of miserable situation, he was electrocuted by storm in the mutant campus massacre incident, spiked by the abomination, even lost his identity to Ivan Vanko. But this time, Tony was ready. He has already upgraded the Iron Man suit and added a bunch of cutting-edge technology in it. Unfortunately for Tony, it was still not enough. This time, he learned of something that he never saw before. Magic. Although he wasn't sure, magic would be able to knock him down. Come on, let's see what you are made of. Tony said confidently. Tony immediately flew to the sky and bombarded the destroyer with his palm cannon. However, the destroyer didn't even move from his position as if Tony's attack didn't have any effect on it whatsoever. Feeling quite humiliated, Tony immediately pulled out a small missile and launched it directly to the destroyer's head. But after the smoke dissipated from around the destroyer, Tony's face quickly turned sour. The missile didn't even leave any scratch on the destroyer's armor. Jarvis, scan the material of the enemy's armor. I want to know what that thing is made of. Tony said to Jarvis on his visual analysis. Unknown material, sir. Continuing analysis. Jarvis said solemnly on the comm at the same time in Asgard, Loki, who was watching the fight up until that was beginning to get bored. Midgard was so disappointing. Their weapon was too weak. Loki said to himself in disappointment. Destroyer. 
destroy that place and beat my dear brother down immediately. Loki said telepathically to the destroyer. On earth, Tony, who was perplexed by the destroyer's endurance, was startled as he saw the destroyer opened its mask, and an orangish beam was gradually concentrated on the opening. Jarvis immediately warned Tony that a high-energy projectile was aimed towards him. Knowing that he couldn't really escape the destroyer's line of sight, Tony immediately charged the chest cannon to counter the enemy's energy projectile. Unfortunately, as Tony's energy cannon collided with the destroyer's energy beam, Tony knew that his cannon couldn't withstand the enemy's attack. Tony immediately allocated extra energy to the thruster on his feet to dodge the powerful beam. Tony knew that he used too much energy on the thruster just now, which meant that he couldn't use the laser weapon for a while. This made Tony question the capability of his Iron Man suit, was it too weak to be considered his greatest creation? If only Tony knew that the armor in front of him was the original sentient armor that was made by Odin, the father of the gods with the most durable metal named URU Metal while also casting some of Odin's magic and rune to the destroyer so that it became more durable than anything else. Knowing that he had no projectile powerful enough to deal any sort of damage to destroyer, Tony immediately turned into close combat. Tony immediately deployed several A. I controlled armor to attack the destroyer. However, nothing changed. The destroyer easily destroyed the armor that Tony dispatched like it was a piece of plastic. A thought that he wouldn't be able to win immediately crossed Tony's mind. He didn't have anything else in his arsenal that might have any effect on the destroyer. On the other side, Coulson knew that Tony wouldn't be able to do much, but at least Tony was able to hold the destroyer long enough for the real reinforcement to arrive. Coulson immediately called Barton again to ask about their whereabouts as he also knew that Tony was at his wit's end. Earlier when Barton informed that Dio would also come to the scene, Coulson was overjoyed. He believed that Dio was the strongest man on earth, and therefore he should be able to defeat this indestructible thing. But Coulson has also prepared a countermeasure on his mind if, by any chance, Dio and Thor failed to stop the destroyer, he will immediately suggest the use of a nuke to deal with the destroyer. He believed that some sacrifice was better than letting this indestructible armor roam free on earth. Dio, Thor, and Barton quickly closed into a small city from the helicopter, where all of them saw the Iron Man was fighting against a silver armor. How can the destroyer appear here? Thor said, perplexed. Destroyer? Did you mean that robot that started to glow? Barton asked worriedly. Thor was immediately snapped from his thought and immediately shouted for the pilot to evade the incoming attack. Dio immediately acted and took control of the helicopter's steering wheel to evade the destroyer's attack himself. Dio knew that the pilot wouldn't be able to react on time to evade the attack. However, the helicopter flew out of control and immediately fell to the ground, but fortunately, everyone inside was safe without any injury. Barton immediately shouted so everyone quickly got out of the helicopter as he thought that the helicopter might explode. Dio and Thor immediately did so while helping the crew to get out too, sure enough, not long after they rescued everyone from the helicopter, it exploded. But the destroyer was soon seen on sight. It walked leisurely towards Thor and the others. Thor was silent for a while as he knew that the only one who could control the destroyer was the king of Asgard. His father. But there was no way Odin would do something this chaotic, so there must be someone else on the throne. Loki. Is that you brother? Thor shouted to the destroyer. Thor didn't show any fear on his eyes but instead a trace of expectancies. My pathetic brother, you are still as naive as ever. Loki's voice was immediately heard trough the destroyer. Seeing the destroyer stopped, Thor immediately approached the destroyer himself. Thor. Don't. Leave it alone. Sif's voice was immediately heard from afar. Thor was confused and turned his attention towards Sif who was in the car with the Warriors 3. But when he looked back to the destroyer, he was startled to see the destroyer with his mask opened and ready to shoot the disintegration beam towards him. What the, why would you do this, Loki? Thor shouted as the beam was fired. Barton, who was observing the situation from afar immediately shot an exploding arrow towards the opening on the mask to save Thor, while Dio has already made his way to grab Thor away from the destroyer. Dio immediately dragged the unmotivated Thor towards Sif and the Warriors 3, while Tony immediately joined Dio in an attempt to fight the destroyer together. Dio also noticed that Jane Foster also arrived at the scene with Dr. Selvig not too far away. 
Did you have a plan to beat this thing? Tony asked Dio curiously. No, if this thing could be defeated that easily, it wouldn't be named the Destroyer, would it? Dio said sarcastically. Do you have any information about this thing then? Tony asked annoyedly. That guy said that the Destroyer was made by a foreign metal and strong magical component that couldn't be destroyed by the current modern technologies. Dio said irritatedly. Are you serious? Magic, really? Tony said in disbelief. Are you saying that I am joking in this kind of situation? Dio said, annoyed of Tony's disbelief. Is God real then? Tony said sarcastically. Depends on what God you are talking about. On that note, that guy was a god of thunder in Norse mythology. Dio said as he pointed toward Thor. Tony's face immediately showed some sort of eureka moment, as his perspective suddenly widened. If that guy was the thunder god, then why couldn't he deal with this thing easily? Tony asked Dio curiously. They have the same concept as human, they also have their own power level. Now, stop your nonsense and help me think of a way to beat this thing. Dio said annoyedly. There was no good way to deal with the destroyer's magic in Dio's arsenal. Maybe, the world, could do some damage, but his other stand will be useless on the destroyer. While Dio had doubts that, gold experience, could do anything to the destroyer as it wasn't an actual life form. In Asgard, Loki was bored seeing the weak humans in front of the destroyer and immediately issued an order to the destroyer to kill all remaining humans on the site. Dio, who saw that the destroyer was going to make its move, immediately summoned, the world, to withstand anything that the destroyer threw at him. But before Dio could counter the attack, the destroyer leaped up and punched the Iron Man from the sky as the Iron Man was the closest to the destroyer. After that, the destroyer rushed toward Dio and punched him. But Dio has already anticipated this attack and let the, the world, to handle it. The world, has been longing for a stronger opponent since a long time ago, and now Dio wanted to give him just what he wanted. The world, immediately hold the destroyer's punch with its own punch, halting the destroyer on the spot. Everyone's focus immediately shifted to Dio as they were shocked to see Dio successfully halted the indestructible destroyer's attack. Even Loki who was controlling the movement of the destroyer in Asgard was stunned for a while, but he didn't seem to care in the end. The world, immediately punched the destroyer on the face, knocking the destroyer down to the ground. The destroyer immediately rose again and opened its mask to shoot Dio with its disintegration beam. Barton on the side was ready to shoot his arrow to stop the destroyer's attack, but Dio was faster than him, Dio immediately rushed towards the destroyer and focused the Hammond energy into his hands to release the Sendo Ripple Overdrive technique and hit the destroyer right on its chin. The destroyer was blown away into the sky, with its disintegration beam being blocked by its own mask. Dio immediately ordered, the world, to drag the destroyer back down to the ground, the world, immediately obeyed and grabbed the destroyer's leg in mid-air and slammed it to the ground. Everyone on the side immediately breathed a sigh of relief as they saw that Dio could handle the destroyer by himself, while Thor and the Asgardians were shocked to see the infamous destroyer was toyed around by a mere human. Are you sure you and Loki are the only child of Odin? Fandral asked in awe. I am not sure now. Thor said looking astonished. But he seems to know everything about me earlier, he even knows about Loki. Thor added, trying to connect the dots. The rest of the Asgardians were trying to figure out who Dio was too, while they couldn't see any divinity on Dio, they knew that Dio wasn't any ordinary human. On the other hand, Dio was annoyed as he saw Thor just stood in the middle of the desert, doing nothing in particular. He knew that in the real MCU, Thor had his ass handed to him by the Destroyer and in the near-death experience, Thor awoke his divinity back, but Dio also knew that Thor on the real MCU only did so to make sure that no one else will fell victim to the Destroyer, a true self-sacrifice. But now, no matter how hard Dio simulated the near-death experience on God of Thunder, he just wouldn't receive his divinity back. So, knowing that he wouldn't be able to count on Thor to end the fight, Dio immediately used his Scarlet Overdrive. With the destroyer almost immune to any physical attack, Dio wanted to try out his luck on the elemental attack. The world, who sensed what Dio wanted to do immediately cooperated without any questions asked, and immediately held the destroyer in place. The destroyer was trying to break free from his invisible attacker, but to no avail, after all, the destroyer was only an armor, 
its true potential could only be achieved if there is a user inside it. But Dio also knew that this armor was basically indestructible by any common means, so he knew that no matter what, the world, due to the destroyer, it wouldn't receive any damage. As he finished charging up his attack, Dio immediately released the Scarlet Overdrive to the destroyer. Although everyone else on the scene was holding their breath in awe of Dio's power, Dio knew that his attack meant nothing to the destroyer. Thor. Does this thing have any weakness? Dio shouted to draw Thor's attention. Mmm, I am not sure. The destroyer was placed on the treasure room to protect it, and I never saw the destroyer engaged in combat prior to this, all that I know is that thing protected the treasure room without fail. No one has stayed alive after entering the treasure room without permission. Thor said embarrassedly. Well then, keep up, will you? Try to get your divinity back and help me. I couldn't hold it much longer. Dio shouted in a hurry. After that, Dio immediately stopped using the Scarlet Overdrive, as he knew that he only wasted his ham and energy. By doing so, he immediately uses his speed in an attempt to hold the destroyer in place, so that it didn't have the opportunity to attack. While trying to hold the destroyer, Dio once again thought of his incapability to resolve the problem in front of him, he couldn't help but think of obtaining more unique stands that will grant him an advantage in battles like Killer Queen or D4C. Dio made up his mind that he will be spending all his savings into gold after this. Thor was in his own dilemma by that moment, as he knew that he had to help Dio, but he didn't know how to get his power back. He felt his pride shattered as he was currently hiding behind a Midgardian's back, incapable of doing anything. Mjolnir. Thor shouted to his heart content, but nothing happened. This time, Thor wasn't disappointed, but he was angry. Angry at himself for making a problem for his father and exhausted his mother, he was angry with his recklessness, arrogance, and stupidity. Thor felt regret, unlike no others, forming a thunderous roar on his chest, with a new mindset, Thor shouted once more, Mjolnir. Heed my call. At the same time, at the shield temporary base in the desert, the researchers were surprised to see the hammer suddenly glowed blue. The hammer was generating an electric vortex, causing all the electronic equipment on the base to go haywire. And right when they were trying to control the situation, the hammer flew out of the base with unbelievable speed. In the desert, everyone was startled of Thor's thunderous roar. Especially the sudden change of weather above them. The wind suddenly surged, while thunder and lightning danced above them. Not too long after, a flash of lightning immediately hit Thor, surprising everyone on the scene while Thor himself immediately rose with the Mjolnir on his hand. Thor had his divinity back. This meant that Odin's banishment was over right then and there. Coulson and Barton looked at each other, they finally understood why Dio was adamant that the one who could handle the destroyer was none other than Thor. Tony on the side was also shocked to see the true god, he was a skeptical person, but he was forced to believe at that moment as the proof was right in front of his eyes. At the same time, Thor finally acknowledged his incapability to become the new king of Asgard and finally understood why Odin would exile him like this, it was all to teach him a lesson on life. Feeling renewed, Thor was planning to apologize to his father and make sure that everything he did earlier would be redeemed and forgiven. He also felt ashamed as he couldn't believe himself for not feeling any responsibility whatsoever after what he did back then. Don't just stand there. Get your ass up here. Dio shouted, getting Thor's attention once more. Dio didn't really know why Thor would think that Dio's attitude towards him was helping him recover his divinity. But Dio was grateful that he didn't have to deal with the God of Thunder again. Leave the rest to me. Thor shouted as he flew straight toward the destroyer. Seeing that he was no longer needed, Dio immediately desummoned the world, to preserve his ham and energy. Dio stepped aside and observed the fight between Thor and the destroyer, Dio knew that none of their attacks should be able to harm each other as Thor's divinity prevented him from receiving too much damage. Knowing that his attack didn't much, Thor immediately rose to the sky and shook the clouds for some thunder and lightning. The tremendous electrical power in the air created a tornado that immediately engulfed the destroyer whole. The scene shocked everyone as none of them ever saw Thor's way of fighting, they were shocked of the said god to hold so much power that no human would be able to achieve. Tony on the side was having his own moment, he finally realized that his Iron Man armor wasn't anything significant. There were so many things in the world that he didn't know about, and therefore countless improvement plans flashed in Tony's mind. 
Thor on the other hand was busy holding off the destroyer while spinning the Mjolnir on his hand inside the tornado. The destroyer, knowing that it couldn't escape Thor's tornado, immediately opened its mask and shot another disintegration beam towards Thor, and this beam was slightly more powerful than before, but this was what Thor has been waiting for. As soon as the destroyer opened its mask, Thor immediately catapulted the Mjolnir towards the destroyer, striking the beam head on. But instead of receiving heavy damage, Thor's Mjolnir repelled the disintegration beam, causing no harm to Thor. Thor soon reached the destroyer with high speed, and the collision between the destroyer and the Mjolnir caused a huge explosion, with the destroyer's mask slightly bent and deformed. Thor was left standing near the knocked out destroyer, while looking at the sky, thinking of his next action. I never thought that you really were Thor of the mythology. Jane said as she came closer to Thor. Thor smiled at Jane, but he knew that he didn't have the time to think about his own love for now. Sif, we have to return back to Asgard immediately. I have a few words to say to my brother. Thor said as he shifted his attention to Sif. Wait a minute, I have some question that you need to answer. Coulson said as he felt the need to rush after hearing Thor would go back to Asgard. Son of Kao, we will talk later, but I assure you that I, Thor would like to form an alliance with your organization on behalf of Asgard. Now, I have some urgent matters that I need to attend to. Until we meet again, son of Kao. Thor said to Coulson wisely. I hope that Asgard wouldn't change their mind as soon as you leave the earth, I would like to keep this place intact. Hope we don't have any bad blood between us. Coulson said solemnly. Relax, Asgard is a peace-loving country. You have my word. Thor said reassuringly. Then Thor immediately walked toward Dio and Barton confidently, while Coulson was sweating profusely, Coulson thought that maybe Thor wanted to settle some score with Dio or Barton as they had their moments with Thor before. I think I should properly introduce myself again, I am Thor, son of Odin, a warrior of Asgard. Thor said as he reached extended his hand. I am Dio Brando, an ordinary earthling, currently resides in New York. Dio said as he shook Thor's hand. No, I mean to ask your other identity. Thor said as he grew confused. What other identity? I never leave the earth, and in fact, I never even leave the United States of America before. Dio said as he showed a sign of confusion. Thor's question resulted in some theory in Coulson's mind, he never truly believed that Dio was a mere human with a good fortune, there must be something else. Thor, it doesn't matter right now. You can ask Odin himself when you return to Asgard. Sif said as drag back Thor's attention to the task at hand. All right, I am going back to Asgard now. I hope you can provide me with the delicious food that you have earlier. The taste is unforgettable. Thor said towards Dio while walking towards the rainbow that suddenly appeared. When Thor bid his farewell, Dio was a little bit irritated as he didn't understand why Thor would act all emotional towards him, as he knew that he didn't do anything out of the ordinary for the Thunder God. But as he remembered Thor said that he wanted to taste Dio's cooking again, Dio's eyes were sparkling. He knew that Asgard wouldn't be short on gold, and once Thor wanted to eat his cooking again, he will make sure to charge the Asgardian with gold. Sure Thor, I don't mind cooking another dish when you return. Dio said while smiling profusely. Oh yeah, I would like for you to see Asgard for all its glory if we have the chance later. Thor said as he invited Dio to go to Asgard with him. Of course, I would like to hear about it later. Dio said while nodding his head and showed his fake smiles. After that, Thor, Sif, and the warriors three jumped inside the rainbow bridges and disappeared from the earth. This rainbow bridge also surprised everyone on the scene, except for Dio. Tony tried to analyze the residual energy left behind by the rainbow bridges to no avail. Are you sure you are not one of them? Tony asked blatantly. Coulson was also eager to hear Dio's answer. No, if I was one of them, the first thing I would do is to make you my alien pet. Dio said as he gave Tony his middle finger. But Coulson on the side immediately thought of the snail that Dio once gave him, that snail wasn't normal, at least it felt like an alien tech to him. But he decided to stay silent for the moment as he didn't have any proof yet. Reinforcement will arrive soon. We should wait here for a while. Coulson said as he sat down on the ground. I have to go. I still have a car of my own that was perfectly fine. Jane said as he pointed toward her car. 
I am afraid you cannot do that, ma'am. The shield is required to write a report on behalf of everyone on the scene, so we still need to hear your story first, and we also have a couple of questions for that matter too. Coulson said confidently. Jane sighed and immediately sat on the ground while Dr. Selvig also followed suit. Seeing that Jane and Dr. Selvig were willing to cooperate, Coulson immediately walked toward Dio and Tony, who were still observing the destroyer up close. Did you find anything useful yet? Coulson asked Tony sarcastically. I am not sure, but I've never seen anything like this before. I wonder if this kind of material exists on Earth. Tony said as he scanned the destroyer with Jarvis' assistance. Dio, on the other hand, discovered something unusual. As he looked at the destroyer with, Hammond Detector, ability, he could see the destroyer was full of runes and mystic art. He also saw that a golden rune was carved inside the destroyer's mask, right in the place that shot out the disintegration beam. But Dio also saw a strange blue rune that seemed out of place also linked to the golden rune. He was confused as the blue rune was really the only thing out of place out of every other rune on the destroyer's body. Dio noticed this because all other runes on the destroyer's body were either gold or silver, with silver was more dominant. Why would you need to add this blue rune on top of the gold one? Is this rune the one that controls all other runes on the destroyer's body? Dio asked to himself confusedly. But soon enough, Dio finally realized the true meaning of the blue rune. But what could he do to remove this out of place rune? If his hunch was right, this different colored rune should be Loki's means to control the destroyer for himself. Which meant the destroyer could move at any time now. Dio's concern immediately came true as he saw that the blue rune was shining once again, Dio believed that Loki was trying to force the destroyer to move again so that he could use it once more. But Thor has already gone to Asgard, there was no one there who could stop the destroyer if it comes back to life. Knowing that he was cornered as there was no one else in the vicinity who was aware that the destroyer was going to move again, Dio immediately summoned the, gold experience, to try to interfere with the rune. Dio immediately ordered the, gold experience, to put its hands on the rune while activating its ability to see what would happen to the destroyer. Unfortunately for Dio, the destroyer's defense mechanism activated, and the life energy that the, gold experience, was giving to the destroyer was instantly redirected to Dio, blowing him back several meters away and he vomited blood as a result. Tony and Coulson were shocked to see Dio suddenly vomited blood even though no one attacked him. Dio, are you okay? What happened? Coulson asked worriedly. I am okay. Evacuate this place as soon as possible. The destroyer will be resurrected soon. I will stay behind and find a way to stop it. Dio said as he wiped out the blood in his mouth. Dio had some idea to stop the destroyer as he finally knew that the destroyer was moving because of a battery of energy inside of it, so in a way if he could eliminate energy inside, the destroyer would cease to move. Tony and Coulson were stunned once again as they heard what Dio had said, they thought that it was all over. Do you have a way to stop this thing from moving again? Tony asked Dio worriedly. I have some idea, but I am not sure if it's going to work. That is why you must evacuate this place now. Dio shouted to Tony and Coulson. Dio kept his eyes on the destroyer while focusing all the Hammond energy that he had on his hands. This move had its own risk, as Dio couldn't regenerate from his injuries by himself, and therefore was forced to order the, gold experience, to heal him while he concentrates. Okay, but if things don't go as you planned, leave as soon as you can. Coulson said as he ordered everyone in the vicinity to leave the area. As soon as everyone started to leave, Dio saw that the blue rune suddenly glowed brighter, and the destroyer immediately moved. Tony immediately grabbed Coulson and flew away to the sky, there was nothing else the Iron Man could do except believing Dio to finish the job. Dio, on the other hand, immediately summoned, the world, and ordered it to keep the destroyer's mask open. And after that, Dio immediately put his hands on the opening on the destroyer's head and released all the accumulated Hammond energy on his arm. In theory, Dio's energy will cancel Loki's energy, thus erasing the rune that Loki had made. Dio's plan was immediately showing the result, as Dio noticed that his energy was indeed cancelling the energy from the blue rune. But soon enough, he was struck by another dilemma, the destroyer suddenly emitted red light on the opening where Dio's hands currently were, signaling that it will shoot out the disintegration beam in any second. 
Dio knew that was Loki's answer after knowing that the destroyer couldn't close its mask and didn't move from its spot. Annoyed by this sudden turn of event, Dio immediately activated, shouted, the world. Dio only had three seconds, and those three seconds were enough for him to erase Loki's rune on the destroyer. When the time flow returned to normal, the blue rune was destroyed, and the destroyer immediately fell to the ground, unmoved. Dio knew that the only one who could make the destroyer move again was only Odin, but as Dio knew that Odin was in a deep sleep at that moment, the destroyer wouldn't be moving for a while. Seeing the destroyer was already on the ground, Tony and Coulson immediately landed near Dio, but Dio could still see the worry on Coulson's face. Is it over? Coulson asked. No, not really. Dio said casually. What is that supposed to mean? Coulson asked worriedly. It means that the person, who sent this armor here, will no longer able to control this thing, but if the real owner has given the order, this thing would probably move again. Dio explained. But don't worry, the real owner wouldn't attack anything on earth. Dio said to try to reassure Coulson. But the truth was Dio had tried to remove the golden rune with his own energy, but nothing happened. At the same time, he realized that Odin's power was still beyond his, and therefore, Dio wouldn't be able to erase the rune that was the extension of Odin's power. What did you do earlier? It seemed like you already know this thing too well. Tony said to Dio curiously. I am afraid even if I break it down to you, you still wouldn't understand anything. Dio said as he sighed and turned his attention back to the destroyer. Tony was pissed off by Dio's offhand comment, as he was hailed as the genius of the world. Tony immediately made a promise to himself that he would learn all there was to this universe and made himself the most genius person in the universe. For now, he will let Dio's comment slide as that was no place to argue. Soon enough, the reinforcement from S.H.I.E.L.D. arrived and immediately recovered the destroyer's armor while taking Jane and Dr. Selvig away. Dio knew that the S.H.I.E.L.D. would immediately conduct an experiment on it as soon as they got their hands on that armor, but Dio also knew that no matter what they did, they wouldn't be able to break it apart. Over the next few days, the Earth returned to normal, but the influence of Asgard's arrival was still visible on Earth. The International Security Council finally relented to Nick Fury's request to make the HERO program to save the Earth later. This was all thanks to the unknown threat that they thought was impossible at the beginning. The country around the globe began to formulate new weapons on the premise that the Earth will be somehow invaded by an unknown force. Some even turned to mutants' power, as it was the closest thing to a superhero, but in America, the mutants couldn't thrive as they were still deemed a dangerous freak. Nick Fury, on the other hand, was reproved by the International Security Council to become the director of the SHIELD once again, removing his previous punishment and the approval of the Avengers program. As soon as he got the good news, Nick immediately set everything in motion. His first move was to analyze and study the Tesseract that he recently got his hands on. He had to weaponize the cube as soon as possible since he had to prepare for the worse. The next thing Nick did was appointing Tony Stark to be a security consultant of the SHIELD and made a joint research team with the Stark Industries. He wanted Tony to research the destroyer's armor as soon as possible and made sure that the armor power could be used for Earth in the future. But this second plan soon fell into an impossible task, as they couldn't do anything to the armor, not even the strongest concentrated laser could cut it down to size. So instead of trying to damage the armor, which was proven impossible, Tony immediately scanned it using the supercomputer and tried to find the armor's material. Tony couldn't help but thought that Dio must have known something about that armor. Tony had tried to ask Dio on several occasions, but Dio always said that he knew nothing, which annoyed Tony a little bit. Dio, on the other hand, took a deep sigh as he knew that Odin would soon take back the armor as soon as he woke up from his slumber. With the recent incident, Dio was once again reminded of his lack of power, before his encounter with the Destroyer and Thor, he felt great. He felt powerful, but after meeting them, Dio realized that he was weak, compared with other beings outside of Earth or those who wield unearthly powers. So, Dio immediately used, Knum, to disguise himself for an entire week and purchase $20 million worth of gold in several places. Dio was a little bit pissed by Tony as he couldn't meet the guy to ask for his money, if he could get his money from Tony, he would be able to buy a lot more gold. But it could wait for now, as Dio has become impatient and wanted to increase his strength as soon as possible. He will get the money from Tony and Coulson later. After exchanging his money to gold, 
Dio immediately went into the villa and conducted all his mental preparation like he always did before drawing from the golden pool. He listened to a pop song while watching a cat video and some sports video. He believed that he would eventually get some good stuff as he had four. Gold, meaning that he could use the 10x draw 400 times. After doing all his routine, Dio immediately began to draw. The first 10 draws, Dio only got a handful of Hammond beads, but he already expected this much from his miserable luck. But unfortunately for Dio, this bad luck persisted until he was at his 50th draws. He immediately took a deep breath while taking some cigarettes to calm himself down. He immediately played another cat video that he thought will improve his luck a little bit and continued to draw after watching the video. Please give me something good. If it's not a permanent stand, at least give me some temporary stand card. Dio begged to himself. Sure enough, the lady luck answered his prayer as the next draw, a shiny card suddenly appeared, meaning that he got a permanent stand. Stand, Hermit Purple Description, the stand of the old man Joseph Joe Star. Type, Close Ranged Stand Ability, Divination, can see a scene from a distance using a camera or any other electronic media. Destructive Power, D Speed, E Range, D Sustainability, a Precision, D Growth, C Stand Evaluation, this stand is the weakest among all stand. Motherfucker. Dio shouted as he flipped the table in front of him. He was truly irritated only to obtain this stand after spending so much money on it. Even the divination power of the stand wasn't that useful. This stand had no strength whatsoever, he even doubted that he could bind someone like Tony Stark in his Iron Man suit long enough with this stand. He was pissed beyond belief, but he knew that was all because of his own luck. Calm down, Dio, calm down. Maybe you can find a use for this stand in the future. Dio said to himself. Dio took a deep breath and composed himself to continue drawing for another stand, he realized that perhaps he could make use of the, Hermit Purple, S Divination ability to good use, but he needed a bunch of cameras first. With music in full blast, Dio finished drawing the first 100 of his 10x draw, except for the stand, Hermit Purple, he didn't get anything noteworthy. Dio has already become desperate for his lack of luck, and thus he searched for some other superstitious stuff that he could use to improve his luck once more. He immediately found something and acted according to the rituals on the web, he turned off all the music that was currently playing and placed Will's picture on the table with three incense burned while saying, I would like to use my brother's luck for myself for a day, Amen Buddha. He said while praying to Will's picture, after saying that, Dio immediately burned Will's photo and threw it to a copper basin that he has already prepared beforehand. After the photo was burned to a cinder, Dio immediately tried to draw again. Sure enough, this time, the Lady Luck sided with him in the draw as once again, it shone brightly, signaling Dio that he got his hands on another stand. My brother Will. Thank you very much, I will remember your sacrifice for the rest of my life. Dio shouted happily. Stand, Anubis Description, a unique stand that doesn't require a user type, equipment slash assimilation ability, selective intangibility, mind control, development, selective drawing destructive power, B speed, B range, E persistence, a precision, E developmental potential, C evaluation, this stand could assimilate with any weapon of choice once. The stand will be destroyed once the weapon that it inhibits is destroyed. The user of the weapon will be the strongest swordsman in the entire world. Dio was overjoyed once he saw the description of, Anubis, that was one hell of a good stand that he got. But that raised a new question, he wondered what kind of weapon that he would use the Anubis on. He needed to find a good weapon for, Anubis, as he didn't want the weapon to be destroyed in combat later. He also knew that, Anubis, was slightly naughty as he hypnotized too many people in the Jojo series. But Dio knew that he wouldn't be using that ability of Anubis as he won't hand his weapons to anyone. Dio suddenly thought of a weapon that was made from the vibranium, adamantium, yaka metal, or even the URU metal. If he somehow could get his hands on these materials, he will be thrilled for sure. He knew how to get them, but he wasn't sure that he would be able to get them himself. But there was still a question whether there will be someone capable of forging the weapons that he wanted out of the rare metal that he got. Dio was lost on his own thought, and he finally snapped back to his senses after realizing that he still got many more draws chances. He wondered just how many more stands that he will be able to get at the end of the day. So, without waiting for much longer, Dio confidently tapped on the 10x draw button. 
After the method of sacrificing Will's fortune wasn't working, Dio was depressed once more. He couldn't get anything good from the draw, and after a while, he finished all his draws chance without finding any more permanent stand. But the complete result was more than acceptable, in addition to the two permanent stands, Dio also got his hands on two stand arrow fragments and three temporary stand, which included, Bad Company, Green Day, and, Silver Chariot. Stand, Green Day Description, A Terrible Stand Born From Pure Evil. Type, Humanoid Ability, Mold Infestation Destructive Power, A Speed, C Range, A, Mold Spread Range Can Be Expanded Infinitely, Persistence, A Precision, E Growth, A Evaluation, Extremely Dangerous Biohazard. Stand, Silver Chariot Description, A Medieval Knight With Zero Personality. Type, Close Range Stand Ability, Armor On, Off Destructive Power, C Speed, A Range, C Persistence, B Precision, B Growth, C Evaluation, Extremely Dangerous If Evolved With A Stand Arrow. Dio sighed after he saw every reward that he got from the draw, he couldn't use any of it yet as he didn't need it for the moment. He was regretting every single moment when he made the drop rate of SSR stand card to zero, back when he was still the developer of the game. He was able to draw, the world, obviously because his name triggered the access of the said stand. After that, Dio immediately consumed all the Hammond beads that he got from the draw, and his max Hammond energy increased to 633, reaching the amount required to unlock the fourth stand slot. Now, in order to unlock the last stand slot, he must have a total of one. Max Hammond Energy Dio quickly thought that the draw this time wasn't completely bad, he currently had the fourth stand slot, which would make switching between stands a little bit easier. But he knew that he had used an absurd amount of money for it. After thinking for a while, Dio knew that he still got some time before the upcoming Battle of New York. So, he could still make some more money to do another draw. In the following days, Dio opened his restaurant while observing Will's situation from time to time, he wanted to see whether his sacrifice of Will's fortune last night really had any effect or not. But fortunately, it seemed that the sacrifice he made last night was all internet scam, as Will didn't seem to be affected by bad luck. After the weekdays were over, Dio came to a hospital to learn human anatomy and human surgery, for he almost killed Tony on the operating table during their standoff against the abomination the other day. Because he couldn't find Tony, Coulson, or even Natasha at that moment, he had to ask Pepper to find him a qualified individual to teach him all he needed to know about operating a human body. He has already given up on learning from a book as it was boring and lack of practice. Pepper immediately came up with a name of a skilled surgeon with a superb medical skill, she even made an arrangement for the hospital that the surgeon worked for to make sure that Dio wouldn't be hindered for his stay there. Dio was very grateful for Pepper's help as she did it all effortlessly. So, without wasting any more time, Dio knocked on the doctor lounge in the hospital to introduce himself. Yes. Who are you? A beautiful long-haired doctor asked curiously as she opened the lounge door. Hi. I am Dio Brando. Miss Pepper, the CEO of Stark Industries had already made an appointment for me to do an internship under Dr. Stephen Strange. Dio said while smiling lightly. Dio read the name tag on the woman's coat and was surprised to see the name Stephen Strange embraided there. I am sorry, I just thought that Dr. Strange was a man's name, before coming here. Dio said while smiling guiltily. Oh, no. Dr. Stephen Strange is indeed a man. I just borrowed this coat, because something happened to mine earlier. My name is Dr. Christine Palmer, Dr. Strange's colleague. Dr. Palmer said while smiling awkwardly. Oh well, it sometimes happens, sorry for mistaking you for someone else too. Dio said apologetically. No, no. It's definitely my mistake. Please do come in, I am sure that Dr. Strange will be here soon. Dr. Palmer said as she invited Dio into the lounge. But as soon as she turned around, she tripped her foot and screamed a little and shut her eyes as she fell. But after a moment, she finally realized that she wasn't falling and opened her eyes again. The scene unfolded in front of her eyes was quite unusual. Dio was holding her body from falling with almost a conspicuous position. She blushed hard as she could see Dio's face from up close, and the handsome face made it harder for her. She began to panic from her pounding heart and immediately stood up straight and sat on the nearest sofa directly. Are you okay? Dio asked curiously. I haven't been to the gym lately, 
so maybe I am starting to get unfit. By the way, did you want a drink? Coffee, perhaps? Dr. Palmer said while still blushing. You should take care of yourself, isn't it a doctor's job to take care of others' health problems? If you get sick, then your patient will have no one else to rely on. But no, I am not a coffee drinker, but thank you for asking. Dio said while smiling warmly. Dr. Palmer nodded her head and immediately tried to break the ice. May I call you with Mr. Dio? Dr. Palmer asked. You may call me Dio, I don't really need formality. Dio said while smiling lightly. Well, if you say so, you may also call me Christine. Can I know which university you graduated from? We're maybe from the same alma mater. Christine said, trying to find a common topic. No, I actually don't study any medicine at the university before. I used to study engineering actually. Dio said casually. Christine was a little bit surprised as Dio's answer left her in wonder. She thought that because Dio would be learning from Dr. Strange, Dio must have been a medical graduate. But, obviously she was wrong. But she knew that Dr. Strange wouldn't take this answer really well, she knew that Dr. Strange would have a temper after hearing all of this. Sorry, I didn't quite understand. Have you studied medical yourself? Christine asked curiously. No, I am afraid not. This would be my first time learning about medical studies. I have my reason to study medical as fast as I can, so I asked a friend to help me find a suitable teacher. Dio explained. Christine was surprised once again as she didn't expect something like this would actually happen. She thought that this must be the rich's whimsical way of killing time as she didn't quite understand why Dio would want to directly learn from a doctor instead of a school. Doctor Strange has a quirky personality that is not easy to get close to, but he is a good person, I assure you. I hope you don't find his rude behavior to be villainous. Christine said hopefully. Of course, I know that a capable person would have a weird personality or hobbies, but I will cherish this learning opportunity. Dio said confidently. After hearing Dio's word, Christine relaxed a little as she didn't need to worry that Dio would hold a grudge against Dr. Strange. But she still hoped that Dr. Strange could behave himself for Dio's sake. After chatting for a while, Dr. Strange finally arrived. Dio immediately introduced himself, but immediately interrupted before he finished. I know who you are, you are that spoiled child that the hospital has burdened upon me. I advise you to go to a famous school to study medical first before coming to me, this will save our time tremendously. Dr. Strange said indifferently. Dio tried his best not to show his anger on his face. If you're gonna reject the offer, why would you wait until I am here to say it? You are wasting my time. Dio said a little bit coldly. I am a busy man myself. I don't care who you are, but I am here not to play a game. You are clearly searching for the wrong person here. Dr. Strange said indifferently. This was one of his trademark attitudes, the famous doctor simply didn't care about anyone that he deemed unnecessary for his career. Dio still tried to hold his anger while smiling lightly. It seems that you are indeed the wrong person for this. I will not learn anything with your arrogance in the way. Dio said coldly. Dr. Strange was exactly like Tony before he experienced the life-changing event, they were inside the bubble that made them think that nothing could slow them down. It was really a pity, seeing that their life changed in a matter of seconds. Obviously, you didn't lie about this guy's attitude. This time, I will back down and search for another teacher for myself. It'd be a big help if you could introduce me to one of your teachers. Dio said toward Christine sincerely. Dr. Strange immediately walked out toward the changing room, leaving Christine and Dio alone. Christine was silent for a moment and looked over to Dr. Strange with disapproval look on her eyes. Look, if all you need is a tutor to learn the anatomy of a human's body, I can help you with that myself. Christine said confidently. She decided to help Dio to disregard Stephen's rude behavior, but only if Dio was serious enough to study the human body anatomy. Thank you very much, but I only have time to learn after 9 p.m. on Sunday, is that okay with you? Dio asked Christine sincerely. Christine thought about it a little and then suggested, I will try to take time off on Sunday, and if I have another free time, I will notify you immediately. She said confidently. I can introduce you to my former mentor if you'd like, but I am not sure she could free up her schedule to teach you. Christine added while contemplating. 
That's okay, if you can become my teacher, I'm already grateful for that. Rest assured, I will pay you for your time. How do a thousand dollars per hour sound? If you are not satisfied with the amount I offered, you can suggest your own numbers that would satisfy you. Don't worry, I wouldn't mind. Dio said excitedly. That's enough, you could have asked for one-on-one -on -one tutoring lesson from famous universities with that number. Christine said sincerely. She first thought that Dio wouldn't pay that much, but as Dio already offered, she might as well take it. So, with the paycheck out of the way, when could we start our lesson? Dio asked excitedly. If you want to start as soon as possible, I can get off from work as early as 12. PM today. I will take lunch and begin our session after, how does that sound? Christine said confidently. Well, I will come again at 12. PM. Don't worry, I will treat you to lunch. Dio said while smiling lightly. After a little chit chat, Dio and Christine exchanged their phone number, and Dio immediately left after. As soon as Dio left, Dr. Strange came out of the changing room and frowned at Christine. You shouldn't take that offer, an excellent surgeon should focus their attention on the operating table, not playing doctor with a fool. Dr. Strange said coldly. Honestly, Stephen, you're probably right. But I can see that he is serious about studying, and as far as I know, you should respect people who want to learn, not ridicule them. I honestly thought you might know of this, considering you are a great scholar and all. You are a disappointment. Christine said coldly. She at first thought that maybe Dr. Strange was the perfect partner material, but after this little exchange with Dio, she immediately realized that she was wrong. Well, I hope that you are right. Since you already have someone who would treat you to lunch, I will head out first. Dr. Strange said indifferently while walking out of the lounge. Soon enough, a Lamborghini's engine blared in the distance, signing Stephen Strange's departure. Dio was still in the parking lot when he saw Dr. Strange, the future supreme sorcerer, got inside his car and drove away. Dio knew that soon enough, the arrogant doctor will get into a car accident that changed his life forever. Dio also knew that the Ancient One was waiting for Stephen Strange to arrive at her door in Kamartage. But a question immediately arose from Dio's mind, what would happen to the MCU plot, if he healed Dr. Strange's hands? Will the next Sorcerer Supreme changed? At noon, Dio and Christine went to a nearby restaurant for lunch, and because Dio still had his lesson after this, they skipped alcohol. After lunch, Christine's impression on Dio was clearly better than before. I have to go home first before we start our lesson, I still have so many books that I used back when I am still a student, you can borrow some of them to help you understand better. We should go to NYU after that and borrow some mannequin there and maybe use one of the empty class over there for your lesson." Christine said confidently. Then, maybe I should start calling you teacher for now on. Dio said with a light smile. If that's the case, I hope that you will not disappoint me as you are my first student. Christine said while giggling lightheartedly. Dio nodded as he didn't want to brag about his learning capabilities, but he will prove it to Christine that she wasn't wasting her time. Soon enough, the two quickly fetched the book that Christine mentioned earlier and drove straight to NYU after. Once they got everything they need, Christine suddenly looked all serious. Now, although Dr. Strange thought that I am wasting my time on you, I will trust my instinct and teach you all I know about human anatomy very seriously, but if I found that you are not 100% on this, I would terminate our agreement early." Christine said solemnly. That's great, I am serious from the beginning. Dio said sincerely. Christine nodded her head and immediately started the lesson, although Dio had zero knowledge regarding human anatomy, with a goal of understanding where everything was located and how to deal with injuries on various places, he would have no problems on learning the complex knowledge. On the other hand, Christine also understood what Dio needed. Therefore she immediately taught Dio the basics of what he needed so that Dio wouldn't waste his time on unnecessary knowledge. Using the mannequin that she borrowed from the university, she taught Dio where every organ should be and what type of injuries that the organs usually suffered. With none of them taking the lesson with a lax attitude, Dio and Christine progressed through the lesson with an astounding speed. Dio, with his strong memory, immediately remembered everything Christine has taught him. As a result, their learning session was really efficient. Christine herself was surprised to see Dio learned everything this fast, she was happy that the lesson could progress smoothly, 
but she also felt depressed as she clearly remembered her struggle as a medical student. Even though she was praised as an excellent student, she was clearly not as excellent as Dio. But she knew that having a great student will push her further on her medical studies too. The afternoon passed quickly, and at the end of the day, Christine asked Dio to explain everything that he has learned that day, and Christine was happy to see Dio made no mistakes on identifying the organs and where they should be. Christine finally understood what the meaning of a genius really was, as Dio continued to explain the various structure of human anatomy without making any mistake. But still, what Christine taught Dio was only a theory, to make Dio truly understand the perfect human anatomy, Dio still must practice with a real human body, in this context a human cadaver. You're really good at absorbing new things. If Dr. Strange saw what happened in the previous three hours, he would have taken back what he said to you, I am sure of that. If you want to become a real doctor, I would like to introduce you to my previous mentor. Christine said sincerely. Thank you, but I still haven't changed my mind on becoming a doctor. Dio said with a light smile. That's a pity. Christine said with a slight frown on her face, she really thought that Dio would become the next world-renowned surgeon in no time. But she didn't press it further, for she believed that everyone had the freedom to choose whatever they wanted. Should we continue our lesson? Dio asked sincerely. Uh, wait, let me make a few calls first. Christine said as she was out of material to teach Dio for today, she didn't expect Dio to absorb things this fast, and because of that, she only borrowed a little amount of mannequin earlier. That's it for today, I will organize some surgical lesson for you in a couple of days. Christine said as the clock showed it was already 9. PM in the night. Well, if it's a surgical lesson, can you prepare a real cadaver for me instead of using some animals? Dio asked solemnly while putting down a scalpel and taking off his bloody gloves. Christine was surprised for a bit, as she knew how precious a cadaver was to the medical school, she could borrow some class and bought some small animal for Dio to learn, but cadaver was a different thing entirely. The cadaver used in medical teaching was a dead human body that was donated willingly either by the family of the deceased or the owner of the body themselves while they were still alive. So, a cadaver for practice wasn't easy to obtain. She knew that a well-known university like NYU should have some cadaver in store for the next lesson, but she was afraid that she will be asking too much, and thus ruined her reputation on her own alma mater. I couldn't promise you that. A cadaver is hard to get, I have to ask the dean first if they have one that they're not using in the meantime, but I am afraid it would be hard even if there is one. Christine said solemnly. Why would that be? I can pay for the cost if that's the problem here. Dio said curiously, in Dio's eyes, so many people died every day in the USA, so there should be plenty of cadaver lying around. Money wasn't the case. You see, the cadaver that medical school can use was only the one that gets donated to the school itself, so there is not much cadaver that the school can have at any given moment. I am afraid if you want to dissect a cadaver, you have to be put together with the rest of the class that has the same agenda, but the university may still deny your entry. Christine said solemnly. Can I provide my own cadaver then? Dio asked sincerely. No, the cadaver has to be donated and has gone through the legal protocol. Otherwise, the university will get into trouble. Christine said as to deny Dio's request. This is too much trouble. Dio said annoyedly, he thought that he could go to Hell's Kitchen and use some mob's dead body for the practical lesson. So, where did the university usually get their cadaver? Dio asked curiously. Campus has several sources for that. Usually, the campus got their hands on the cadaver due to personal request to donate their own cadaver to the university once they passed away, sometimes, the university bought a John Doe or Jane Doe from the hospital, there are also some terminally ill patients who wish to sell their organs to make it easier for their family too, while the last one is not considered as a donation, it's still legal. Christine said solemnly. But usually, the university got the cadaver of a criminal who was sentenced to the death penalty, this was the main source of the cadaver in medical school. Christine added, she needs to tell all sources the campus got their hands on a cadaver to Dio so that Dio wouldn't resort to something illegal later. Dio nodded his head in understanding, although it was a little bit cruel that a death row prisoner had their body donated to a medical school, but it was better than nothing. At least they could atone for their sin a little bit after they die. I see, I will look on to these sources and see what I can do to support the university later. 
I will communicate with the university later so that there wouldn't be any misunderstanding. Dio said casually. Do you really have a way to provide the cadaver legally? Christine asked curiously. I think so, but I will not be able to help much. Dio said casually. Great, I will help you talk to the university later, I think my former mentor would be thrilled to hear the news. Christine said excitedly. Don't be too excited about this, I will see what I can do and contact you later. I still don't know how many cadavers I can get. Dio said casually. Of course. But the number really doesn't matter, as long as you could provide some, I am sure the university would be glad nonetheless. Christine said assuringly. With this, she knew that she could help her former mentor and her alma mater on the cadaver crisis. After leaving the university, Dio took Christine for dinner as he realized that they hadn't had anything to eat since noon. Sorry if it's so late, let me treat you dinner. Dio said casually. Well, it's fine, I am glad that you can learn quickly, and thus I become engrossed in teaching too. Christine said while feeling a little bit embarrassed. She couldn't refuse Dio as she thought that it would be rude. After all, Dio has already given her eight dollars just for today. She thought that a thousand dollar per hour was too much, but Dio insisted on paying the exact amount that he promised. Christine and Dio had a lively conversation on the way to the restaurant, while Dio mostly teased her on her choice of restaurant and so on. They soon stopped at an Italian restaurant and had a great meal there, while it was not a pricey place, but they got some good food. After done eating, the two laughed as they have devoured their food without any leftover. Why don't we look for a place to drink a glass of wine or two? Christine said encouragingly. Well, go on, where would you like to drink? Pick a place. I don't usually go out and drink myself, so I don't really know any good bar. Dio said casually. Christine was a little bit surprised when she heard Dio's answer, she first thought that Dio was a guy who frequently visited many bars and maybe many one-night stands, turns out she was wrong. She became more curious as Dio was different than any other handsome guy that she ever met. She immediately directed Dio to the local bar that she always visited when she had free time. As a surgeon, she really restrained herself from drinking as she didn't want to have an accident while in the middle of surgery or something like that, and thus she only went to the bar when she had a few days to herself. However, once she got to the bar, Dio was surprised to see the bartender, and some people there greeted her familiarly. She greeted them back politely while smiling and a little chit-chat here and there. I see that you are a regular here. Dio said, teasing Christine a little bit. I used to come here, but as I become busier than before, I don't really have time to come here anymore. Christine said sadly, but she immediately grabbed Dio's arm and pulled him to the dance floor. Come on, this is my jam. She said excitedly as the DJ played pop music. Dio felt a little change in Christine's behavior as she seemed more carefree in this bar. He was right, as soon as Christine hit the dance floor, she began to dance beautifully, drawing people's attention, and Dio was no exception. The DJ gave a shout out to Christine like he was familiar with her, and thus the chanting of her name began. Christine didn't let them down as she began to move more elegantly to please the eyes that watched her every move. As soon as she finished dancing, the crowds began to chant for an encore, as they wanted to see Christine danced one more time. At the same time, Dio was just standing there like a tree. He wasn't familiar with the song, and he wasn't familiar with dancing either, so to not embarrass himself, Dio decided to just stand there waiting for Christine to finish. But the DJ immediately changed the song, and Dio was a little bit surprised by the song that the DJ chose, it was Pussy Control. Prince's booming single and Jojo's intro. Dio couldn't help himself and began to dance to the song as he always imitated the move in the anime's opening while watching Jojo before, he began to slide in, through a hand up and much more bizarre move that Jojo's opening often showed and weirdly, the crowds began to watch Dio in awe, and some even began to mimic Dio's move. This dance is weird. But it's cool. Some guy said as he tried to mimic Dio's movement. Dio was a handsome guy, so it was not hard to attract the crowd to mimic his dance like this. Even Christine also chanted Dio's name while trying to mimic his move too. It could be said that everyone was having a good time on the dance floor, but the music had to end at one point, and Dio was finally done dancing. You are so cool. Your dance is awesome. 
Some girl on the side shouted at Dio as he walked over to the side. Yeah, what dance is it? Does it have any name? Some guy asked Dio. The crowds kept asking Dio so many questions, and some of them even though that Dio was a model. Dio even got so many phone numbers from a thirsty girl who wanted some one night stand. So, as it was overwhelming, Dio grabbed Christine's hands and immediately bolted out of place. But unfortunately for them, they have just arrived and didn't have the chance to drink anything yet. Wow, I've never thought I would be fleeing from the dance floor before. But are you sure you want to leave? It might become an unforgettable night for you if you stay. Christine said teasing Dio. No, I might die by those girls' hands. Did you see how they look at me just now? Like I am a piece of meat. Dio said annoyedly. Well, remind me not to bring you to this place again, or else you could become the next steak on the menu. Christine said while still teasing Dio. But seriously, what is that dance? Christine asked curiously. Yeah, let's not come here again for a while. The dance was called the torture dance, I can teach you how to do it if you want. Dio said casually. Sure, let me take your dance lesson later. Christine said casually. But suddenly the two of them were interrupted by a man that was tossed by the bouncer out of the bar, Dio suddenly felt familiar with the guy that was beaten by the bouncer. Wait a minute, I think I know that guy. Dio said to Christine as he continued to observe the guy that was being beaten by the bouncer. Christine was confused as Dio didn't do anything to stop the bouncer from beating the crap out of the said guy or anything at all, even after he said that he might know the guy, was he Dio's enemy? At the same time, Dio knew what he saw. He saw that the man's wound was healing at a rapid rate. Dio smirked and immediately walked over to the guy and pushed the bouncer away. He pulled the man up and asked him if he was okay. But as soon as Dio saw who the person was, he couldn't help but felt a little bit excited. His guess is right. It was Logan, or many people might be more familiar with his other name. Wolverine. Is he your acquaintance? If so, we might have to leave this place as soon as possible, I think someone has called the cops. Christine said worriedly. Dio nodded and helped Logan walked away from the place as Dio saw that the infamous Wolverine was still intoxicated. But as soon as Dio wanted to walk away, the bouncer earlier came with his friends to stop Dio from leaving. You! How dare you make me look like a weak sauce! I will beat you up for trying to rescue that beaten shit!" The bouncer said angrily. Dio sighed as he had no choice but to deal with around twenty thugs. Dio felt that these men were ungrateful, didn't they know that Dio just saved them from a horrendous death? They clearly didn't know who they were up against, if Wolverine was angered, these people would have regretted their attitude. I said, on your knees, and ask me for mercy. The bouncer said commandingly. Dio looked over, and Christine was hiding behind his back, so killing these mobs was out of option, he couldn't scare Christine, for he still had more to learn from her. Christine, wait here for me, I will deal with them. Dio said as he reassured Christine to wait. No, we better wait for the cops. They are clearly dangerous. Christine said worriedly. It's fine, I know how to handle a guy like this. Dio said with a light smile on his face. He then proceeded to put Logan down on the ground and walked over to the bouncer. Fuck, aren't you a fearless? How dare you taunt me like this? Guys! Capture that woman too! The bouncer said towards his men. Dio sighed and immediately punched the closest man to him on the arm, causing a broken bone sound. Dio repeated this action to all men that approached him and thus resulted in all of them having some sort of broken bones. The crowds gathered were in awe, as they thought that they just saw a kung fu movie. The bouncer, however, fell to the ground looking scared. He didn't expect all the men he brought would be brought down in an instant like this. Stay back. Don't come near me. The bouncer said as he pulled the gun from under his shirt. But Dio was faster, he immediately twisted the bouncer's hand, which was holding the gun and immediately threw the gun away. Can we go now? Or do you want to end up with a broken bone like the rest of your friends? Dio said indifferently. The bouncer nodded his head quickly as the fear intensified. He didn't dare to stop Dio again as he really feared Dio right now. Now, I don't want you anywhere near this establishment again, you hear me? If I ever saw you do something illegal again, it will be more than just a threat. 
Dio said while he showed the bouncer the federal ID badge that he got from Nick Fury at the time. The bouncer immediately turned pale after seeing the FBI badge that Dio showed, it was clear that this was a huge mishap on his end. There was no way a small gang member like him could fight a federal bureau. Dio immediately walked away and put back his FBI badge inside his pocket. What did you show him? He looked scared for a moment. Christine asked curiously as Dio walked to her. Nothing, it was just a fake FBI badge that I got from a friend. It seems like it worked, so that's that. We need to leave now, by the way, the police will arrive here soon. Dio said while helping Logan to stand once more. Christine nodded, but she knew what she saw, the badge was real. It couldn't be a fake. She began to wonder who Dio really was, as she couldn't help but fantasize about this moment as one of the spy moments in the movie. The three of them immediately walked towards Dio's car, and Christine immediately helped Dio to take Logan to the back seat. Aren't you afraid of the consequences of impersonating an FBI agent? You will be in so much trouble if you get caught. Christine asked with a slight smile on his face. Relax, I am not misusing it. I only use it to scare away some scumbags that come my way, you know, for slightly better protection. Dio said explaining the FBI ID but seriously, I am starting to think that you are some sort of secret agent now, seeing that you are able to win even though you seem at a disadvantage earlier. Christine said with a smile on her face. Dio then proceeded to drive Kristen home, and once he got there, Christine offered Dio to come inside and have a cup of coffee. Maybe next time, I need to do something in the morning tomorrow, Dio said apologetically. Christine nodded her head and waved Dio goodbye before entering her house. Dio then drove towards his villa with Logan on his back seat. Logan was the second homeless man ever to enter his house, unlike Thor, this man had little to none to offer Dio in return. After arriving at his villa, Dio immediately carried Logan into his guest room and threw him in, leaving Logan to sleep drunk as a skunk. The next day, Dio was woken up by an unexpected sound, at first, he thought it was a thief, but once he checked it out, it was just Logan who was going through his kitchen and taking some beer with him. Sorry, is this your house? I am already here when I am awake. I hope you don't mind me taking some of your alcohol. Logan said casually while drinking a can of beer like drinking water. Don't you remember what happened yesterday? I brought you over after some guy beat you up in front of a bar. Dio said casually, Dio then took several cans of beer and tossed another one to Logan. Well, maybe if you have a bottle of vodka in the house, I might remember it more easily, Logan said casually. No, I don't have vodka, but I might have a bottle of wine in that cabinet. But may I know your name? Dio said while pointing to the cabinet behind Logan. I am Dugan. You can call me by that name. Logan said, trying to hide his real identity and taking the wine bottle from the cabinet that Dio pointed at. Oh no, that was a fake name, right? I know for a fact that your name is Logan and that you are a mutant. Dio said with a smirk on his face, but Logan quickly rushed toward Dio and threatened him with his adamantium claw. Who are you? How did you know my name? Logan said angrily. Relax, jeez. You stained my floor. Dio said as he put away the beer in his hand. Even though he didn't show any fear, Dio knew if he didn't take Logan carefully, he could be bleeding on the floor. If I said that I know you by chance, would you believe me? Dio said casually. Logan didn't take Dio's answer to be reassuring, and thus, he pulled out another claw from his other hand. Shield. I know you from Shield. You are in their database. Dio said, trying to calm Logan down. I have some connection with S.H.I.E.L.D., and I have some information regarding any special mutant, and that is when I learn about you. You are a mutant who has a strong healing factor, and a codename Wolverine. Dio said casually. S.H.I.E.L.D. I hope you don't lie to me about this. Logan said while retracting back his claw. It seems that Logan also knew about S.H.I.E.L.D. Otherwise, he would have questioned Dio some more. Well, that's the hard truth. But hey, I just saved you from killing the man outside that bar and gave you a bed to rest and now you even take a bunch of my beer, maybe a little bit of gratitude would be nice. Dio said casually. I don't ask for your help in the first two accounts, but I guess thanks for the beer. Logan said while heading to the door to leave Dio's villa, 
but before that, Logan took a plastic bag and filled it with the beer from Dio's refrigerator. Hey, what are you doing, I am not giving you that much. Dio said annoyedly. I said thanks, didn't I? In fact, you are too young to drink beer, this sugary shit is more than enough for you. Logan said while tossing a bottle of coke towards Dio. That's stealing. I don't think an X-Man should partake in a robbery. Dio said tauntingly. Now you have done it. I have to take away your wine too for that comment. Logan said tauntingly. Now, you can beat me up for the things I take, but don't ruin my shirt. Or I will make sure to pay you back for that. Logan said indifferently. Are you sure? I am no pushover, you know. Dio asked curiously. Now, I might have to take your whiskey too for that comment. Logan said tauntingly. He obviously didn't take Dio's word seriously as he saw Dio as a guy who got everything easily. You have said it yourself. Don't regret what you said after I am done. Dio said excitedly. He couldn't find an unkillable punching bag just every day. Let's go then. I will play for one hour, every time I can knock you down, you will lose one bottle of whiskey, and of course, I don't mind you fighting back, but it may be better if you don't pop up your claw to attack me. Dio said confidently. Go on then, attack me. You seem confident enough to do what you said. Logan said tauntingly. Dio then took the fight to his backyard, and Logan immediately took off his shirt so that it won't be ripped during the fight. Logan then proceeds to attack Dio and punch him on the face, Dio, who wanted to test the might of the Wolverine, didn't dodge, or block the attack, but instead received it head on. Dio was a little bit surprised that Logan's punch wasn't as bad as he thought, it surely hurt but not as much as he originally thought. That's it? Is that all you got? Dio said tauntingly. Logan looked very surprised that his punch didn't do much, so he jumped towards Dio one more time. But, before his punch connected, Dio grabbed his arm and immediately used Logan's weight to throw him to the ground. Logan was immediately back to his feet again, showing the wild beast agility that he possessed. But the next thing he saw made his blood boiled. He saw Dio took one bottle of whiskey and broke it, spilling all the whiskey to the ground. Well, look at that. One down in a matter of second. It might not take one hour to finish this. Dio said tauntingly. Dio was influenced by Tony's poisonous tongue, giving him a knack to agitate someone. Logan angrily rushed forward to attack Dio again, but this time, he gave up on defending and only focused on the offensive. That was Wolverine's trademark fighting style that little to none other characters of Marvel could copy. That was because of Logan's feral instinct and his healing factor, making any defensive action unnecessary. However, with his Hammond energy intact, Dio's speed and power were above Logan. So, all Dio had to do was to get used to Logan's attack pattern and timing. As time went by, Logan was frustrated as his attack kept getting blocked and dodged by Dio, he began to think that maybe Dio had mutant power that revolved around defensive capabilities. Dio smirked as he found Logan distracted and immediately launched an uppercut that caught Logan off guard. Logan was once again knocked down, and with that, Dio destroyed another bottle of whiskey. Is it wise to be distracted during a fight? Dio asked Logan tauntingly. Logan was so angry that his claw was popped up by itself, but Logan immediately sheathed them back down because the rule said that he couldn't use his claw, and he found that fair. Are you also a mutant? Logan asked curiously. You aren't the first person to ask me that question, but no. I am not a mutant. My strength comes from a type of energy called Hammond energy. This energy allows me to do many things. Dio said casually. Many things. What a farce. Logan said with a sneer. He didn't believe that kind of power existed. And so, Logan immediately took a big boulder and threw it towards Dio. He might not be able to use his adamantium claw, but it was not against the rule to use any weapon available in the vicinity. Dio smirked and cut the boulder that was thrown at him smoothly into two sections. Logan was surprised once more. He thought that the boulder was cut with adamantium, considering how cleanly it was cut. You know, my Hammond energy doesn't only allow me to cut the stone cleanly like that, but it can also be used as a propeller to make everything more powerful and faster than what they should be. Dio said as he took a small pebble and flicked it to a three near Logan. 
The pebble flew with such a speed that Logan had no time to move, but fortunately, it wasn't directed to Logan's head. It flew near Logan's head and then directly to a tree and created a hole on the tree. Logan was surprised. He doesn't think he ever fought someone like Dio in hundreds of years that he has lived. What the hell are you? Logan said, surprisedly. I am just a restaurant owner, nothing more. I occasionally take a part-time jobs at Shield, to cure some ailment of their choice, but well, I don't trust them that much. Dio said casually. So, what is your purpose in helping me? Logan said curiously. Um, to expand my potential customer. If you can pay, I will help you remove the chronic toxins that were caused by the adamantium inside you. Dio said casually. Toxins? I don't know what are you talking about. I don't get sick. My healing factor prevents me from having one. I am sure you are taking me for someone else. Logan said confusedly. All that he knew at the moment was that his healing factor would keep him immortal, no matter what happened. But he didn't know that in the future, the adamantium created a potent toxin inside his body that prevented his healing factor to work properly. For now, Dio was the only one in the world who had that knowledge. Logan left while carrying a plastic full of beer and bottles of whiskey, Dio was satisfied as he finally had a chance to spar with the infamous Wolverine, but he was left a little bit disappointed as Logan wasn't as powerful as he thought. He knew that he could be meeting Logan again in the future, but he didn't know whether it was as an enemy or ally. After looking at the time, Dio then took a bath and called Nick Fury for a favor to provide the NYU with cadaver for learning purposes. Nick Fury was a little bit surprised to receive a call from Dio, and thus he refused immediately, but after some threat and convincing, Nick Fury finally agreed to provide his help. I also want to ask you something. Is there any way for the shield to get some rare metal for me? Dio asked Nick Fury casually. What kind of material are we talking about? Nick asked curiously. Something like adamantium alloy, or maybe vibranium. After dealing with the Asgard problem, I realize that I need a weapon for myself. Dio said casually. Nick Fury fell silent for a while, he knew what Dio was talking about because deep down, he felt the same thing. The threat that Earth faced was more powerful than any individual power out there. How did you know about adamantium alloy? Nick asked compulsively. I helped a hobo earlier, and this morning I almost got sliced in two by his sharp claw. Go figure. Dio said annoyedly. Why would you friends with Wolverine? Didn't you know that Little Wolf isn't domesticated yet? Nick Fury said sarcastically. Obviously, I don't really know who he was. In fact, he stole my alcohol. Should I call the police on his ass? Dio asked back with the same sarcastic attitude. Well, okay, I will send someone to monitor his every move. But for the adamantium alloy, I will see what I can do, but don't keep your hopes up. I don't know if I could get some of them for you, it was in the military hands now, and S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't in good terms with those guys. Nick said annoyedly. But, you know, I could make it possible faster, if you want to join my program. Nick said casually. Forget it, on the second thought, I don't need it that much. Dio said annoyedly. Nick still hasn't given up the attempt to recruit Dio for his stupid Avenger program. He planned to visit William Stryker compound later and steal the adamantium inside himself. After ending the call with Nick, Dio immediately sent a text to Christine stating that the cadaver problem should be resolved and that the campus would receive cadaver donation soon, but the amount was still unknown. Christine immediately replied to Dio, profusely thanking him on behalf of her alma mater and mentor. Dio then proceeded to list the metal that he wanted and how to get it, the first in the list was adamantium, and he knew that William Stryker should have it on his secret base. The second on the list was vibranium, and he knew the easiest way to get it was from Wakanda, but entering Wakanda was still a problem. There was still the URU metal and Yaka arrow, but he didn't think he had a way to travel to space yet. He also thought of the metal the destroyer was made of, but he still needed Tony to finish his research on that thing first, and he didn't know if Tony would succeed or not. Dio knew that a combination of all this material would give him the best weapon possible. But he knew that getting them wasn't as easy as it seemed. Nick Fury worked efficiently this time, in only two days, a total of 30 cadavers has arrived at New York University School of Medicine. 
The dean sounded really excited when he thanked Christine, as that was the first time that he got this many cadavers at one time. NYU surely had many powerful connections as they had many influential alumni, but getting a cadaver was still challenging. So, the campus started to pay more attention toward Dio's need and tried to give him space to learn efficiently. Of course, it was all through Christine's effort too. At 8 p.m. on Friday, Dio has already closed the restaurant and waited for Will to finish his shift and leave the restaurant, after that, he immediately went inside the office and immediately broke a new camera that he has prepared beforehand on the office table. Suddenly the broken camera spat out a clear image, an image of William Stryker. Dio was using the, Hermit Purple, stand to get the necessary information about Stryker's secret base. At this time, this was the only stand in his arsenal that could spy on people. Unfortunately for Dio, for these few days, Stryker has been holding a military meeting and went straight home afterward, so Dio hasn't grasped the information about the secret base at all. And this time, it was no different, as Dio saw that Stryker was still at his home. Just as Dio was thinking on how to get the information he needed, his phone rang. He picked it up and saw a text from Christine, informing him that she was ready to go to the campus and teach Dio on human body surgery using the cadaver from earlier. A few hours later, Dio's class with Christine was finally over. Christine was a little bit surprised to see Dio didn't get disgusted by the cadaver, making her think that Dio was already used to seeing a dead body in his life. When Christine asked Dio why he wasn't afraid of the dead body, Dio's answer was understandable, he said that there was no reason for the living to be afraid of the dead. Dio immediately drove Christine to her house, there was nowhere else to go to as the clock had shown the time at 1 a.m. Will you invite me at this time? I don't have any hobo on my backseat to deal with this time. Dio said teasingly. I can't now, drinking coffee will affect my sleep, and I have surgeries tomorrow. Let's do it another time. Christine said apologetically. Christine felt bad because deep down, she wanted to know about Dio more and spend some time with him, but the circumstance was really against her. She was envious of some people who weren't affected after drinking so much coffee. That's a pity. Maybe I will make my own coffee for you next time. Well, I will get going now, good night. Dio said while walking back towards his car. Okay, see you later. Be careful on your way back. Christine said with a smile on her face. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Dio wasn't in dire need of sexual act, he was just suggesting to Christine in a flirty way to tease her too, but she was really a beautiful girl, so if she really wanted Dio, he wouldn't reject her. However, on the car, Dio once again broke another camera to activate, Hermit Purple, S effect and spy on Stryker again. Fortunately, this time, the background has changed. Stryker was in his secret base. Dio felt excited as he finally found where Stryker has kept the adamantium this whole time, it was in the Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania. Dio didn't expect William Stryker would come into the secret base at midnight. Fortunately for Dio, he remembered to check at the last minute. Now all he had to do was backtrack William Stryker's move before he arrived at his secret base so that Dio could get to the secret base without a problem later. Dio immediately went to Stryker's home and used the, Moody Blues, to backtrack Stryker's path. About two hours later, Dio successfully got the, Moody Blues, to access Stryker's path, and so he followed the, Moody Blues, to the secret base. About an hour later, Dio arrived at a place that looked like a chemical factory, if it was not because of, Moody Blues, he wouldn't believe that was the place. After parking his car in a rather secluded location, Dio immediately swapped the, Moody Blues, into, Knam, and immediately walked into the guarded place confidently. But inside the place, Dio was a little bit surprised to see that the guards were all taken down, they had a familiar puncture wound on their chest and stomach, leading Dio to the conclusion that Wolverine was also there. Dio immediately thought whether this was the time when Logan was chasing after Stryker to get his revenge. This night would be exciting. But Dio was a little bit curious about how did Logan found this place. Did Stryker somehow bait Logan to come there? If it was true, then Logan might be in danger. As he pushed forward, a man suddenly ran into him, and as soon as the man saw Dio, he tried to get away in fear, but Dio was fast, and thus he immediately grabbed the man's cloth so that he couldn't get away. What is this place? How come there are so many people died here? Dio asked intimidatingly. 
This is Colonel William Stryker's base. This place was dedicated to research a mutant, I don't know the details, but it seems a mutant was wreaking havoc in this place. The man said frightenedly. Where did the mutant go? Is he already captured? Where is William Stryker? Is he still inside this base? Dio asked curiously. I don't know, the mutant may be still inside the base, but I don't know anything about Colonel Stryker. He may still be inside too. The man said worriedly. So, what is the purpose of this place? Is it for a human experiment? Dio asked intimidatingly. It is, but it's all done with consent. This place was built mainly for experiments in adamantium and how to implant the mineral onto the human body. The man said nervously. Dio let the man go and smirked as he continued to walk inside, he finally realized that this place was indeed the place that he was searching for. William Stryker was currently on the run while being chased by Logan, but suddenly he stopped and deliberately let Logan enter the room he was in. Logan. How great of you to visit me. Are you here to express your gratitude to the adamantium on your body? William Stryker said with a sneer. Don't take me for a fool, Stryker. Today is the day you meet your maker. Logan said intimidatingly. Logan immediately rushed toward Stryker in order to strike him down, but suddenly from the side, a woman appeared, piercing Logan's chest with a sharp claw that was also made with adamantium. Logan immediately understood why Stryker didn't keep running, this woman could hold her ground against Logan. Now, it was a bad move to attack me. So, Lady Deathstrike, feel free to chop him up. Stryker said menacingly. Stryker then. Left the place while laughing profusely, leaving Logan to fend off Lady Deathstrike on his own. Stryker. Logan shouted in frustration. He tried to chase Stryker again but immediately realized that the woman in front of him was much faster than him. Logan immediately attacked the woman, but was surprised once again that the woman also had a strong healing factor like him. The woman smiled creepily before attacking Logan in his heart. This fatal strike was nothing to Logan as his healing factor would heal him back again. Logan and Lady Deathstrike kept attacking each other despite unable to kill one another. In the meantime, Dio was in the room nearby and observed the fight from afar, he knew that Logan was backed into a corner at that moment. Dio was a little bit amused as the fight was intense, with none of them could be killed using normal methods. But at the same moment, Dio saw the vat of black liquid in the room where both fight and instantly knew that the liquid was the thing that he has been searching for. But the next problem immediately occurred, how on earth will Dio take the adamantium? The liquid adamantium would immediately start to harden as it cooled down, and once it was hardened, it will be nearly impossible to do anything to it. Suddenly, Dio saw that Logan was about to get kicked onto the vat of adamantium, and Dio immediately kicked Logan aside as he got nervous that somehow the adamantium would be spilled. Logan was surprised to see a man came out of nowhere and saved him from falling to the adamantium container. Lady Deathstrike was annoyed by the arrival of a new enemy, and she immediately rushed toward Dio so that she could avoid fighting two opponents at once. Seeing that the woman was after his life, Dio immediately reinforced his body with thick Hammond energy and concentrated a hefty amount on his fist, as soon as the woman was close enough, Dio punched her face, flinging her to the wall. Dio's punch was enough to kill an elephant, but because this woman was already reinforced with adamantium, and her healing factor, she stood back up like nothing ever happened. Logan, however, stood in the middle of the room, surprised to see the man's strength. Hey, what are you standing around like an idiot for? Help me find her weakness. Dio shouted at Logan. Logan was startled once again. He knew that voice. Dio, in fact, only changed his appearance and not his voice, so Logan immediately recognized his voice while he was confused as nothing else was the same. Have you finished all that beer and whiskey? Dio asked Logan in amusement. It really is you. Logan said in disbelief. Hey, watch out. Dio shouted to Logan as the woman suddenly attacked. The woman attacked, but Dio knew that she was still mildly confused as her head was bashed to the wall earlier. Even if she had an adamantium skull, her brain wasn't protected from the concussion. She would feel the effect, but the damage to her brain would be immediately healed. Therefore, Logan had lost his memory, he was shot at point blank by an adamantium bullet to the head. After realizing the impact of Dio's attack, Logan copied it immediately. 
He rushed forward and grabbed the woman's head, and bashed her head towards the wall and the floor. The woman immediately lost her ability to fight as she couldn't move her body like she wanted to do to the effect of concussion. Dio immediately walked toward the vat of adamantium and immediately searched for a way to move the adamantium without spilling it. He knew that he could inject the adamantium to the woman's body using the syringe nearby, but Dio chose not to as he didn't want to waste any of this adamantium to an irrelevant person. One thing that William Stryker needed in order to make his adamantium experiment a success was a strong human body with a healing factor, that was because of the excruciating pain that the subject will undergo and the damaged bones that will happen in the middle of the experiment. But even with the strong healing factor, Logan was almost dead for real while undergoing the experiment, and that was why the syringe in Dio's hand would be able to kill either of them easily at that moment. But Dio didn't want to lose any of this adamantium for that purpose, so he didn't want to use it to kill any of them. Dio thought for a bit and realized that the only method to take this adamantium was to keep the container extremely hot all the time, fortunately for Dio, he had the scarlet overdrive but will his Hammond energy be enough to keep the adamantium from hardening? Dio immediately tried to heat up his hands with the scarlet overdrive and immediately touched the container to copy the temperature of the liquid inside it. Dio immediately knew that his plan would work and so he immediately cut the entire container out of the machine it was hooked up to and lifted the container up. Dio noticed that Logan was still fighting the woman from before and frowned as he realized that Logan was still losing against this woman. Hey, do you need any help over there? Dio asked Logan casually. About damn time if you ask me. Logan shouted in annoyance. Then hold her down and make sure that her claw is contained. Dio said while walking towards Logan and the woman with the adamantium container in his hand. Logan immediately directed both of the woman's hands toward her own chest and locked them down with his own claw, the woman felt dread as she saw Dio walk towards them, she felt her brain took serious damage earlier, and she also knew that she wouldn't be able to withstand another punch from Dio. She tried to break free out of Logan's hold, but Logan was adamant about keeping her in place. Dio immediately concentrated a significant amount of Hammond energy on his left hand and punched the woman's head to the ground. She immediately fell limp to the ground, unmoved. Logan immediately let her go and sighed in relief that finally, the woman was finally knocked down. What are you doing here? Did you come for the adamantium? You do know that you need to keep them at one. F, right? Logan said while pointing toward the adamantium container that Dio was holding. I know, it's already taken care of. Dio said casually. He immediately increased the Hammond energy that fueled the Scarlet Overdrive to increase its heat. Logan was surprised to see Dio's hand turned red, heating up the adamantium container from outside. Hurry up, there would be more people coming to this place soon. Dio said, urging Logan to walk out of the base. Logan nodded and scraped the wall to make a path out of the base for them both, once they were outside of the base, Logan immediately told Dio to wait as he would bring a military truck over to help Dio take the adamantium container out of this place. Dio nodded as he also realized that he couldn't drive while holding the heated container like this, so he waited for Logan to bring the truck over. Not too long after, Logan came with a military truck, and Dio immediately told Logan to drive toward Dio's car. Dio didn't want to leave his car there, after all, the car was still on loan. He didn't want to lose all the money that he has already spent on the car. Logan was speechless as he couldn't believe that Dio still had the leeway to think about something that trivial, as he knew that they couldn't drive on a sports car with that container still on Dio's hand, but he was proven wrong after seeing that Dio never intended to drive the Porsche, in fact, Dio lifted the Porsche and put it on the back of the military truck. Logan was shocked in disbelief, how come an ordinary person could do all these things? He could turn into another man, kept the adamantium container in extreme heat, and lifted a car easily. This guy was full of jokes. Meanwhile, Stryker, who successfully escaped the base earlier, had brought reinforcement with him to capture Logan, but he was surprised to see that the only person waiting for him inside the base was Lady Deathstrike, complete losing control of herself and couldn't heed his order anymore. Dio then directed Logan towards Tony's villa as he thought that Tony was the only one who could make him the weapon that he wanted. After Dio stepped out of the truck, Logan nodded and immediately left with the truck. Dio then waved to Tony's camera, and Tony immediately opened the door and excitedly approached Dio. What is this? Is this it? Why am I feeling disappointed? Tony said as he felt excited earlier that Dio was calling, 
telling him to prepare a 1F heating device. Don't you want to know what this is? Dio said teasingly. Tony then led Dio to his studio and immediately connected the heating device that he prepared earlier to the container in Dio's hand. Dio immediately sighed in relief, knowing that he didn't have to maintain the scarlet overdrive to keep the liquid adamantium hot. So, what the hell is this thing? All I can see is some form of liquid metal. Tony said curiously. Have you ever heard of metal called adamantium? Dio said with a smirk on his face. Adamantium? Isn't that the metal used on a top secret project by the USA government? I already did my research on this metal once, but because the amount was too few, I failed. Tony said as he became more interested in the adamantium in front of him. Well, yes. But it's mine now. This is adamantium in liquid form, they need to be kept on at least one. F, or it will solidify, and once it hardens, the adamantium is almost indestructible, and it would be almost impossible to work with. Jarvis, scan and analyze this thing. Tony said to Jarvis. So, where did you steal it from? I know that this is not something you can find lying around on the street, and knowing you, you must have used an illegal means to get your hands on this. Tony said casually. Let's just say, I took it from a person that the world would be glad if he doesn't exist, and I didn't kill anyone to get this thing. Dio said sincerely. Tony then shook his head as he knew that Dio had messed with the secret military project, but chose not to do anything about it. Jarvis then suddenly announced that the data about the adamantium was ready, and Tony could look at the data at any time. As Tony looked at the data, he became excited all of a sudden, this metal was unique, as it was the strongest and hardest type of metal there was. Now, I know that you came here because you need my help to tweak with this thing, right? So, spit it out, I will do it if you leave this metal on my care. You are in the presence of the world's greatest scientist, so there is almost nothing I can't do. Tony said excitedly. Tony didn't hold back his poisonous tongue, if he wanted to have something, he wouldn't wait for others to offer him one, he will go for it himself. Dio was a little annoyed by Tony's arrogance, but as Tony said, Dio needed his help for this one. Well, I want a sword, the best of the kind. I already have a rough image of what it looks like, and adamantium is only a part of the material for that sword. I will find the next material, and if you create the sword that I want, the rest of the material would be yours." Dio said solemnly. Is that it? A sword? Consider it done. Tony said confidently. Although he was unfamiliar with forging a sword, but surely, he could research on how to make one, for he was the world's greatest genius, Tony Stark. Dio and Tony immediately shook hands, marking their new partnership. Tony also deliberately erased any surveillance recording that showed the military truck that Dio and Logan drove, and Tony also made sure that nothing could be traced back to Dio or to himself. Don't tell Pepper about anything that happened tonight, okay? Tony said as he saw Dio off. Dio nodded and immediately entered his Porsche and left Tony's villa to return to his own home. At the same time, Lady Deathstrike has already slaughtered the group of soldiers sent by Stryker to deal with Logan and successfully escaped the base herself. When William Stryker returned to the base, he was surprised to see that every soldier has become a corpse, and the adamantium contained in the base was gone. He became restless as he lost so much in one night. The next day, Dio opened his restaurant like nothing happened, but as the day went by, Nick Fury called him informing that the shield couldn't give Dio the adamantium, as the SHIELD's proposal to conduct a research on the adamantium has been rejected by the Council. Nick Fury himself was in the awkward position as this morning the Council called him back and accused the SHIELD of stealing the adamantium on the military base because the Council has rejected his proposal, although the Council had to drop the accusation because their lack of evidence and many other problems. Nick was still a little bit agitated to know that someone has stolen the adamantium and made it like the SHIELD was the one responsible for it. Nick then directly asked Dio on his whereabouts yesterday as he suspected that Dio was the one who stole the adamantium from the military. But Dio's answer was perfect. Not only he had alibi, but he also had proof that he wasn't anywhere near any secret military base. But this was all thanks to Tony's meddling, Tony has already prepared an alibi for Dio, and he also had erased all digital proof that Dio came to the military base last night and so, without anything else to ask, Nick ended the call. After the call ended, Dio smirked in victory, knowing that the first step to getting the perfect weapon was done. 
In the next half month, Dio worked hard in his restaurant and took Christine's lesson very seriously. He already got to the point that if he must operate on Tony again, he would do well by himself. So, in the last lesson, Dio suggested that they suspended the lesson for a while. Christine agreed because, in her eyes, Dio was already a decent surgeon, she was a little bit ashamed of Dio's learning speed and said that she would be ready to teach Dio anything else he needed in the future. Dio nodded his head while smiling warmly to Christine and then invited her to dinner to commemorate the end of the study session. In the restaurant, Dio and Christine indulged themselves with so many red wine that Christine was dizzy. So, Dio immediately drove her home before she became too drunk to walk. So, it seems that drinking coffee with you will be difficult in the future. Dio said jokingly in front of her house. Well, the coffee that I brew was terrible, so you can forget about it, but you can fulfill your promise to me, how about teaching me that dance move you did back then, what is it called? Torture dance. Christine said teasingly. Yeah, that's the name. I didn't expect you still remember that, but are you sure to do it now? Dio asked with a lustful look. Christine blushed and nodded. I don't want to have any regrets later. She said confidently. Well, that makes the two of us. Dio said with a sultry voice that made Christine blush even more. So, Christine immediately grabbed Dio's hand and entered her house quickly. The music from the bar back then was immediately heard inside the house, Dio then directed Christine to do the torture dance move, holding her hands the entire way, making sure that she got the moves correctly. After a while, the dance move changed to those of light and romantic movements, neither Dio nor Christine knew when it began, but the night was surely unforgettable, and surely neither of them would regret it. Dio was currently sitting on the first-class flight toward his next destination, and that was Wakanda, the country that the world thought was declining and poor. But in fact, Wakanda was the most advanced country that the earth had right now. Dio had also closed the restaurant for a week, while also giving Will some bonuses for the week-long vacation. After hours on the plane, Dio finally landed on Wakandan land, but after Dio had done all necessary paperwork, he walked into the nearby toilet and used, Knum, to change his appearance completely. He then proceeded to hire a high-price experienced guide to bring him to the village of Wakanda. After 20 hours of bumps and toilet stops, Dio finally arrived at the Wakandan village, Dio saw that the village was unique as the home was built with bamboo and wood, with the bottom part hollowed as to make the houses higher than the ground. We are here. Give me my money. The tour guide said as he demanded his pay from Dio. Here. It's half of what we promised, you will get the other half when you drive me back to the airport. Dio said as he handed a thousand dollars to the tour guide. Okay, good. You are an American who keeps his promise. The guide said excitedly. A thousand dollars was a huge amount of money there, and that was why the guide was so happy to receive the money from Dio. The guide also worked as a translator for Dio and Dio also paid him two hundred dollars per day for that. So, with his own interpreter, Dio greeted the village resident. Hello, is this the land of Wakanda? I am here to talk business, and thus can I talk to the village chief? Dio said, and the guide immediately translated his word to the local. The local resident then spoke in an African language to the guide, and the guide immediately told Dio what the local has said. He said that outsider isn't welcome in this village and they have no need of the business that a white man brought, and he also told us to get back to where we came from. The guide said to Dio. Dio wasn't surprised by the local's rejection, because he already knew about Wakandan's reserved attitude. He thought about it for a while and immediately proposed, that's a shame, but the sky is already dark, can you give us a place to stay just for tonight? I will go back tomorrow, is that okay? Dio said sincerely. The guide immediately translated Dio's word to the local, but Dio had already noticed the change of the locals' faces after hearing Dio's word, so it very likely that this man was the real Wakanda people because Wakanda was so advanced that English was a common language. But since the man was playing dumb, Dio didn't want to break it to him. So, after another whispering, the guide told Dio what the local has said. They agreed to lend us a room, but we have to remain inside at night, as the place has so many dangerous beasts roaming around. The guide said, interpreting the local's word. Thank them for me, and we will leave at dawn. Dio said to the guide and immediately pulled his camera for taking a picture of the beautiful scenery around the village like a tourist would do. 
Although some of the villagers remained vigilant of Dio's every move, they didn't think Dio was a threat, so they let him be. As the night passed, the Wakandan people started to cook for dinner with a bonfire. Although they don't welcome strangers in their village, they gave Dio and the guide a meal like what they gave their own family, so Dio and the guide still have a warm meal for the night, this was the trademark of Wakandan people's nature. They were very kind and friendly people by nature, and thus if Wakanda wasn't a closed-off country, they would have many friends across the globe. After finishing their meal, Dio entered the house that was already prepared for them and make sure the guide fell asleep so that there would be no trouble for him later tonight. At midnight, Dio then quietly slipped off into the village after hearing that there was no beastly cry outside and approached the house that he determined to be the house of the village chief. Dio knew that the Wakandan had so many weapons that they could use to protect themselves, and that was why they were fine with two strangers entering their place like this. So, Dio needed to be extra careful so that he wouldn't have to deal with a problematic situation later. So, in front of the villager's house that he believed belonged to someone influential, he used the, the world, to scout inside, and sure enough, the villager was sleeping inside. He also found a cylindrical device that glowed with a blue light near the door. Apparently, this device was like an alarm for an intruder. Dio then thought of the best possible course here, and he knew that he couldn't make any sound as the houses were close to each other, if he did so much as made a commotion, the entire villager would be woken up. So, he took off his clothes and transformed into the villager that he first met and knocked on the door to wake up the villager inside. Who is there? The villager said alarmedly. It's me. I think those two outsiders are a bit questionable. Dio said using the voice of the villager. Dio bet that the Wakandan also used English as their communication language because if they don't, his cover would be blown instantly. If the situation got worse, he was prepared to resort to some drastic measure, the most important thing at the moment was to get his hands on some vibranium. Bablo. Come in and let's talk inside. The villager inside the house said as he opened the door. Dio was very happy inside as, Knum, successfully deceived the villager. What did you find, Bablo? Why are you wearing the outsider's pants? The villager asked curiously. But Dio didn't know how to answer all questions given and therefore decided to stun the villager using the, the world, that was already waiting behind the villager. How could you betray us, Bablo? The villager said as he fell unconscious in front of Dio. Seeing that his plan worked smoothly, Dio then began to look around the house for anything he could use to find the real Wakanda. But before he went any further, he transformed into the knocked out Wakandan and changed into his clothes. Dio also wore any accessories that the Wakandan wore to further perfect his disguise. While doing so, Dio noticed that the watch that Wakandan used was a little bit special, so he immediately took advantage of the night and stuffed the unconscious Wakandan into the trunk of the car he brought in. Dio then returned to the house that he slept earlier and left two dollars. And a note for the guide and left immediately. As the sun gradually rose, the guide finally awoke, and the first thing that he noticed was that the person that he was supposed to guide was nowhere to be seen. He was confused as he didn't know where the guy wandered off to, so he looked around the house. He became more confused as he finally noticed a two dollars. And a note near his pillow and immediately checked the content of the note. I have something to do, leave this village immediately. The money was yours to take, but drive away from here quickly, don't stop no matter what happens. Otherwise, you will be in big trouble. The note left by Dio said. The guide immediately became nervous, as he knew that the villagers in this part of the country weren't keen on someone snooping around their place, so the guide panicked and immediately got into his car and quickly left the village. He didn't know what trouble he would get if he stayed, but he didn't want to find out. After hearing the car machine, Dio immediately stood up and prepared for his next plan. The Wakandan villager didn't really care about the outsider that has left, but they began to worry as Asamoah never showed up. Bablo immediately knocked Asamoah's door, but there was no answer. Deputy Captain Asamoah, are you inside? Bablo shouted as he knocked on the door. But there was still no answer, so Bablo and several other Wakandan began to disable the house's security and immediately knocked down the door. They were surprised to see Asamoah fainted inside the house, looking slightly pale. Asamoah, what happened? Bablo said as he immediately ran towards Asamoah. He was surprised once again to feel Asamoah's skin was hot to the touch. It seems that he was sick. 
His body temperature is really high, we need to bring him to Wakanda immediately. Bablo said worriedly. How can he be sick? The bracelet doesn't show any abnormalities. Another Wakandan said curiously. It doesn't matter, he needs to be checked in Wakanda immediately. Maybe the bracelet was just broken. Bablo said worriedly. Bablo's word managed to convince everyone, they thought maybe the bracelet was in a state where it needed to be serviced, but the most important thing right now was to make sure that Asamoah was okay. Bablo, I will contact Captain Okoye and request a transfer aircraft to take Asamoah back to Wakanda, I will also request that Princess Suri checks on his condition, it may just be a new type of sickness that the bracelet wasn't able to detect. Another villager said commandingly. Bablo nodded, and soon the villager went out to inform the necessary people in Wakanda, and so not too long after, the Wakandan aircraft that looked like something that came out of a science fiction series came and took Asamoah and immediately flew toward the real Wakanda. At this point, Dio, who disguised himself as Asamoah, was very satisfied with the situation he was currently in, he couldn't believe that he could come into Wakanda this smoothly. He couldn't wait to finally get his hands on the vibranium. Not too long after, Dio finally felt the aircraft was landing, meaning that he has arrived in Wakanda, he wasn't sure how far he has traveled as he didn't spend too much time in the aircraft, he also didn't feel that the aircraft was that fast. But as soon as the aircraft landed, he was immediately carried by the medical personnel inside the aircraft and taken into a huge building not too far away. He saw that inside the building was full of technology that was usually found in a sci-fi movie. Currently, not even S.H.I.E.L.D. was aware of the true nature of Wakanda. Take him inside, Princess Suri is already waiting. The captain of the Royal Guard said commandingly. Dio, who had his eyes closed, continued to pretend to be sick and immediately taken into the treatment room, where the princess has been waiting. As Dio who was currently disguised as Asamoa arrived, Princess Suri become a little bit excited, she immediately ordered the medical team to take off Asamoa's bracelet and took him into the scanning table immediately. The medical team obeyed without question as they know that Princess Suri was the smartest Wakandan in that era. Since she didn't see any abnormalities with the bracelet, Princess Suri then began to check Asamoa's body for any abnormalities, but she still found nothing. She has already checked his blood condition, a heart condition, a full scan on his brain, and even his stomach for poisoning, but everything was normal. She felt strange as this never happened before, so she immediately began to cool Asamoa's body with the medical cooling that the facility had. She was surprised once again as Asamoa's body began to cool down rapidly, showing a sign of recovery. She was surprised because, under normal circumstances, the patient body wasn't supposed to cool down this fast. Furthermore, the reason why Asamoah was in this condition in the first place was still unknown. She immediately began to scan Asamoah's body for any change, and she still found nothing, her report all said that Asamoah was very healthy. What is happening to this man? Suri asked curiously. Suri was planning to examine Asamoah further, but her bracelet beeped, it seems that she had something else to do. Observe him for an hour, if he shows any anomaly, bring him to me immediately. Suri said to the medical personnel. Also, release the people in quarantine, I don't think it is necessary to quarantine them any longer. Suri said to the guards. They immediately nodded as they knew Suri's order was absolute. Suri didn't know that once she left the medical facility, Asamoah immediately opened his eyes and smiled satisfyingly. Dio's disguise was on point this time, and he had succeeded infiltrating Wakanda. All Dio must do right now was to wait for an hour, and probably he would be escorted to a recovery room after. After an hour, Dio woke up, and a guard immediately walked towards him. Change your clothes. Princess Suri wants to see you. A bald female guard said indifferently. Dio nodded and immediately followed the guard toward a room, and he immediately changed his clothes and put on the bracelet. Dio then followed the female guard once again, this time, he knew that he was taken to the research lab where Suri was often worked. He observes his surroundings immediately to plan his escape if things went wrong. Although he knew that Princess Suri was not one to resort to violence, he still must plant a last resort ditch plan. Once he got to the research lab, Dio was a little bit surprised to see the future king of Wakanda and the future Black Panther in person. Chala. Hail Prince Chala. The guard said with the signature crisscrossed arm movement. Oh, Asamoah, I see that you have recovered well, how do you feel now? 
Suri said as she heard the guard paid respect to her brother. Thank you, your royal highness. I feel much better now. Dio said as he still disguised as Asamoa. Good, but can you tell me how you got sick in the first place? Did you drink or eat something before you faint? Suri asked curiously. Dio already knew that Suri would try to find an answer on his sudden sickness and so he already thought thoroughly what he had to say in this situation beforehand. I don't really know, your royal highness. My body started to burn in the middle of the night, and soon after I fell unconscious, maybe it has something to do with the two outsiders who come to the village yesterday. An outsider? Please tell me about them. Chala said, suddenly interrupted Suri in Asamoah's conversation. Of course, your highness. Two outsiders come yesterday claiming to do business with us Dio started to tell the story while observing Chala and Suri's expression. It didn't matter whether Chala would investigate this matter or not, he won't be here long after all. After hearing Asamoah's story, Chala fell silent for a while. He knew that he wasn't the king yet, so he had to investigate this matter quickly, so there would be no problem for him in the future. I will immediately send some groups to investigate these two outsiders. I believe Wabi's team should be able to find them. Chala said confidently. However, Chala kept observing Asamoah with a certain uneasiness. He was afraid that somehow, Asamoah was used as a bacteria or virus carrier to wreak havoc on Wakanda soil. Princess Suri was aware of Chala's uneasiness, and thus she made her decision quickly. With your story in mind, I believe that you still have to be observed for a while and so I will make an arrangement for you to stay in here for the time that I have to observe your condition. I hope that there is nothing wrong in the end. She said commandingly. Dio, who was still disguised as Asamoa, couldn't refuse Suri's order and, therefore, only nodded his head and followed the guard to the room he was assigned to. Dio was smiling inside as he was one step closer toward his goal to obtain vibranium. Inside his new room, Dio felt bored waiting for the right time to go out. He must get the vibranium and then leave this country soon. Otherwise, his cover would be blown once the guide was found. So Dio immediately made plans to transform into Chala himself. Dio then immediately knocked on the door, and a guard immediately opened his door and asked him what was wrong. Is Prince Chala still here? I just remembered that I have some useful information for him. Dio said urgently. His Highness has been out for quite some time, but I can convey your message for him, the guard said casually. Dio smirked and immediately ordered, the world, to knock the guards out, and then he immediately placed the guard on his bed to make it look like Asamoa was still sleeping his bed. He then quickly transformed into Chala and headed towards the research lab once more. Along the way, Dio maintained Chala's posture and made sure to greet everyone with the signature Chris crossed arm movement. Once he arrived at the research lab, everyone was quite surprised as he was supposed to be out. Brother. Why did you come back? Did you forget something? And why are you wearing a different outfit? Suri asked curiously. This is just an experiment, I want to see how I look with this outfit. Dio said while smiling lightly. It's a failure, though, but it still shows a little of your charm. Suri said teasingly. So, did you only come back to show me your new outfit? Suri asked exasperatedly. If I knew you would say this rude comment, I wouldn't come back with this outfit. But no, I am here to get a vibranium, I have some idea of a new weapon and I want to test my theory, don't worry, I will give you one after I am done. Dio said teasingly. Why my materials? Didn't your labs also have them? Did you want me to send it over? Suri asked curiously. No, no. It's too much work, I am closer to your place, and I am not planning to return to my lab soon, so I need yours. Dio said confidently. Are you sure? The vibranium in your lab is a lot bigger, no? Suri asked curiously once again. I know, but I am just going to experiment for a little bit, it was such a waste to use the bigger one. Dio said, trying to quench Suri's curiosity. You cunning man. You want to surprise father on his birthday, later didn't you? Suri asked teasingly. Nothing gets past you, huh? As expected of my sister, but sure, I expect father to be happy after seeing what I have made. Dio said as he smiles lightly to Suri. Suri then pressed some buttons on her control panel, 
and a metal box immediately came from the door beside her, inside was the infamous vibranium alloy itself. Is this amount enough for you? Suri asked curiously. Yes, it should be enough for now. Dio said to Suri trough his guys as Chala. At the same time, Suri's wristband beeped, a sudden communication interrupted Dio and Suri's conversation. Her Royal Highness, we just found out that Asamoa has stunned the guard and escaped his room. A guard has said from the transmission. Send the guards to find him immediately, don't worry about me, I am safe here. Suri said confidently. Dio however, knew that he had to make haste as one end of his guise has been exposed. But as he was about to leave, Suri stopped her. Brother, I have a new panther armor for you to try. Suri said as he reached for Dio's neck and helped him wear the neck brace. But she was immediately shocked as the neck brace didn't show any sign of activating. Dio was secretly cursing under his breath as he knew that the neck brace would not activate for him, Knum, could copy the appearance to perfection, but it couldn't copy any special trait that was unique to that individual, like Tony's intelligence, Logan's healing factor, or in this case, Chala's special tattoo. Suddenly another transmission was heard in Suri's wristband. Suri, Asamoa on the base is fake. The real one is with me right now. The enemy is very likely able to transform into someone else, don't trust anyone coming to you. Chala's voice was heard through the transmission. Suri was frozen on the spot as her mind immediately thought about the entire thing that her brother just said in the transmission, she knew from the beginning that the person in front of him was unusual, and therefore he must be not her real brother. Look, I don't think that you should do anything, just let me go, and no one would be hurt. Dio said calmly. He also prepared the, the world, in advance, lurking around him if anything bad occurred. Suri ignored Dio's light threat and immediately ran toward a gun on her table, but the, the world, was already behind her. Dio was forced to knock Suri and made her a hostage, as he didn't know what would happen from that moment onwards. Therefore he needed assurance that he could escape this country without any bloodshed. Let me go. Suri shouted violently. I am sorry that it comes to this, but I am afraid I need you to escape now. Dio said politely. My brother would arrest you immediately. Our army would soon surround you like an army of ant that found sugar. Suri said while squirming, since, the world, still restrained her. Dio was holding on to the bag of vibranium as he wouldn't want to lose it, while Suri's words turned into reality soon enough, Dio was surrounded by the army as soon as he left the base. Release our princess, right now. The captain of the royal guard shouted threateningly while pointing her spear towards Dio. Of course, I have no intention of holding her hostage for too long. But I sure need an aircraft for my leave and for you to stop pointing your weapon at me. And of course, there's always an option to refuse my request if your princess life worthless. Dio said politely. No, don't listen to him. In the name of the royal family of Wakanda, I command you to capture this man immediately. Suri shouted confidently. Dio was surprised by Suri's bravery, but the royal army was different, they were clearly confused about what to do right now. But fortunately for them, Chala's voice was suddenly heard through the intercom on Okoye's arm. Don't act rashly. Wait for my return, I will solve this myself. Chala said calmly. Everyone evacuate the place. Okoye said as she obeyed Chala's order. Invader, let go of my sister, and I promise you can leave Wakanda safely. Chala said calmly in front of Dio. Dio was annoyed at himself at the fact that he was too slow. If he was faster only by a couple of minutes, he would have been far away from this place by now. Now, I know from my point of view that you will keep your words, but I cannot say for sure for anyone else besides you. So, in regards to my safety, I will only let her go after I got an aircraft, and I am able to fly away from this country safely. Dio said confidently. Dio immediately transformed himself into someone else as he thought that talking to the real Chala while using a disguise as Chala himself was awkward. Everyone else, who saw this transformation, looked at Dio in wonders, as their technologies were not yet able to replicate the person completely like what Dio just did. I promise in the name of the son of the current king of Wakanda, I will let you leave Wakanda safely as long as you let her go. Chala insisted. I don't think you hear me earlier, or perhaps you need some kind of motivation before you can do as I say. Dio said calmly as he placed his hand on Suri's neck. 
Chala immediately became desperate and quickly signaled for the fighter plane to come down. I will agree to your request as long as I become the pilot of the aircraft. Chala said confidently. My prince. That was too dangerous. Okoye said worriedly. Stop. I have my own reason, I know Suri wouldn't be completely safe as long as I didn't do this. But don't you worry, I will be safe. Chala said confidently. Dio knows that Chala must be wearing the panther armor behind his suit, and so, it must be the reason that he was able to remain calm like this. But Dio didn't care about it, so he immediately agreed to Chala's term. Dio smirked while murmuring that he also couldn't wait to see the Black Panther's power. Suri heard what Dio said and froze once more, as she thought that Dio was only a thief, but he seemed to know Wakanda's history to some extent. In the next minutes, Dio followed Chala inside the fighter plane and ready to leave Wakanda. The royal guard could only watch as the fighter plane took off, leaving Wakanda with their prince and princess. The speed of the plane was very fast, allowing Dio to get to wherever he wanted in a relatively short time. Dio then ordered Chala to fly west as he didn't specify his destination just yet. He then proceeded to confuse Chala by ordering to fly south and five minutes later ordering him to fly east, and continued to do so for more than an hour. Come on, where do you want to go? This is confusing. Suri said annoyedly. I don't know, but maybe I'll know once the aircraft following us leaves, if they don't leave us alone, I am afraid all that we could do is fly around aimlessly in the sky. Dio said confidently. Chala and Suri were a little bit shocked to see Dio notice the aircraft that followed them. Have you noticed from the beginning? Chala asked curiously. No, but after a while, I noticed that after I kidnapped a princess and a prince like this, it'd be unthinkable if no one follows. Thus, I bait you to reveal the current situation. Dio said confidently. Dio's answer silenced Chala and Suri as they didn't know that the invader this time was also a smart person. Wabi, you have been spotted. Leave immediately. Chala said calmly. Wabi obeyed without any question as he has already thought that the invader knew of what was happening because of the abnormal route. Very well, my prince. From now on, you are alone. We pray for your safe return. Wabi said calmly. Dio immediately looked out, and suddenly, around 20 fighter planes appeared as they deactivated their stealth system and left immediately. I promise you in the name of the Black Panther, no one will follow us anymore. Chala said sincerely. Very well, I hope none of your people would tarnish the name of the Black Panther. Dio said casually. He then directed Chala to fly toward Japan. Not long after that, the invisible fighter plane landed in the quiet park unnoticed. I have fulfilled my part of the agreement, now release my sister. Chala said calmly. Now, release the hatch first. Dio said casually. But Chala stared him down, a look of disbelief was written all over his face. All right, you win. Here you go. Dio said as he pushed Suri toward Chala casually. Suri and Chala were quite surprised as they didn't expect Dio to release Suri this easily. Suri, are you okay? Chala said as he inspected Suri from head to toe. I am okay, but he took the vibranium alloy. We can't let him go just like that. Suri said worriedly. At the same time, Dio had charged the Hammond energy into his hands and punched the plane's door open. The impact as the door was busted, startled Suri and Chala. Dio, who was listening to their conversation the whole time, immediately walked out of the plane to leave. But, Chala immediately clad his Black Panther armor and immediately chased after Dio out of the plane. Now, I did say that you can leave Wakanda safely, but you still have to leave the vibranium behind. Chala said confidently. Well, I believe that confrontation was not inevitable. And so, let's go. Dio said as he taunted Chala to take the vibranium himself. Dio stood there, unmoved while Chala charged towards him. He wanted to see just how powerful the Black Panther's attack could be. Chala hit Dio as hard as he could, but Dio's Hammond energy immediately mitigated the damage away, and thus Dio immediately landed a counter punch to test his hand-to-hand -hand combat but his attack also didn't do any damage to the Black Panther as the Black Panther suit could absorb the kinetic energy it came into contact with. Dio tried again with a punch coated in Hammond energy, and the result was still the same, 
the vibranium still absorbed the Hammond energy like it was nothing. In the next couple of minutes, their punch against each other ended in a stalemate. None of them could damage each other. The civilians that walked near them immediately pulled out their phone and started to record the scene as they thought that Dio and Chala were recording some movie or something like that. They began to shout as they saw that Dio finally took the upper hand on the fight. Suri, who was observing the fight on the plane, was shocked to see that her brother's attack couldn't even scratch Dio's shirt. How Dio could do this, she wondered to herself, but the most important thing that crossed her mind was she needed to upgrade her brother's Black Panther suit as she saw that it was lame and had no crowd control. After a few minutes of testing Black Panther techniques, Dio realized that the Black Panther wasn't using the powerful suit that could discharge a shockwave, so he didn't really have anything more to see from Chala. Is that all you got? I am getting bored. Dio said tauntingly. Getting annoyed, Chala immediately ejected the claws on his hands, which were also made of vibranium. Even though vibranium was known from its defensive capabilities, it could still be used as a weapon. Dio immediately dodged Chala's every move as he wasn't sure the claws could break his Hammond barrier or not, and Dio wasn't keen to find out now. Knowing that Chala was using his best tools on his arsenal to defeat Dio, he immediately summoned, the world, to even the playground. He ordered, the world, to hold Chala down, and he immediately used, Hermit Purple, to tie Chala down. Chala immediately became nervous as he couldn't move anymore, he tried to struggle, but it was all in vain. You won. Kill me now, warrior of Wakanda would never ask for mercy. Chala said respectfully. But at the same time, seeing that her brother lost and accepted his defeat, Suri immediately intervened and pointed her guns toward Dio. Let him go or I will shoot. Suri said confidently. Leave, Suri. I am already defeated. Chala said in frustration. No. I will not let you die. Suri said confidently toward Chala. Hey, you need that vibranium to make something, right? I could help you out as long as you let my brother go. Suri said confidently while walking closer to Dio's position. No, there is no need for that. I will take this vibranium for now and leave, let's just say that I owe this vibranium to Wakanda for now, I will pay it back in the future, but please don't follow me, it wouldn't end well if you do. Dio said politely. Dio immediately left and desummoned, the world, and the, hermit purple, as he leaves. Although Chala was free from his shackles, he didn't dare to chase after Dio, he didn't want to act rashly and chose to take Dio's word for it. But Chala felt awful as he let Dio go, he let his defeat sunk in, and he now felt powerless again. But another thing that he knew for sure was that Dio wasn't the enemy of Wakanda, at least Chala never really felt any aggression and hostility toward Wakanda from him. Are you sure to let that person go? Suri said curiously. Yeah, I don't think he is a threat to Wakanda. Chala said confidently. Chala arrived at this conclusion as he realized that Dio could kill Chala or Suri whenever he wanted, but he didn't do it. He also realized that he only lost a few vibranium, but he also hoped that the man wouldn't sell it to anyone who could misuse the vibranium in the future. In fact, Chala was looking forward to seeing the man again in the future, but the first thing he needed to do was to get stronger. Even Suri's anger dissipated as he saw Dio left, and she immediately began to tend her brother quickly. It wasn't long before both of them were spotted by the Wakanda fighter plane and left Japan quickly. Chala's boarding was noticed by the civilian who recorded the fight earlier, and they were shocked to see a flying object so close to them, they originally thought that this was a movie scene, and thus they didn't expect the flying object would actually move. They felt excited and began to take a picture of the mysterious plane and Chala, who was boarding the said plane. Dio walked through Tokyo Street aimlessly as he didn't have any money on him at the moment. Dio thought about getting a desperate woman to help him for the night, but as he saw that the women on the Tokyo street either had their own partner or used a thick makeup, he lost all interest in them. He immediately shifted his attention toward the Yakuza, he believed that no one would blame him for borrowing some money from them. So, he entered a dark alley and transformed into a handsome man worthy of a Hollywood star. Dio then headed to the entertainment area, and sure enough, a man with a business attire immediately approached Dio. Friend, can I have a little of your time? My name is Huang Mao, I am from the Xinghua Entertainment. I saw you from afar, and I couldn't help but notice that you have the potential in the entertainment business. 
Huang Mao said as he gave his business card to Dio to prove his word. He spoke with a sincere attitude, making it hard for a normal person to reject his offer. Dio smirked as he knew that this man's invitation was more like a trap for a newcomer. He knows with his current face, Hollywood wouldn't even wait to cast him on the next movie or advertisement, and thus Dio bluntly rejected the man's offer. I am sorry, I am not interested in working in entertainment industry, I even rejected the offer of some Hollywood production house called CAA. Dio said confidently. Hearing that Dio had rejected CAA, the man became more enthusiastic, he wanted Dio to sign his contract as to make his own agency became famous. So, Huan Mao used his secret weapon, he whispered to Dio that he would provide him with a beautiful woman for Dio to sleep with later. Of course, Dio wasn't surprised when he heard Huang Mao said this, he already knew this kind of tactic too. Dio smirked as his plan worked perfectly, this guy must have a connection to the Yakuza for sure. So, Dio nodded his head to express his agreement with Huang Mao's offer. Huang Mao then politely invited Dio to a place more suitable to make a deal. Huang Mao smirked when he walked in front of Dio as he thought that he netted a big fish. Not long after, Huang Mao and Dio arrived in front of a hotel, and Huang Mao brought Dio to room 402 right away as two women with kimono had waited inside. Who are these women? Why are they here? Dio said, faking his innocence. These women are here to entertain you, I will leave you with them for a while as I would take your contract in my office first, I hope that you will not get bored by these beauties. Huang Mao said while laughing innocently. Well done, my friend. I'll be sure to get to know them closely. Dio said, still faking his real intention. Well then, I have to go now. Enjoy your stay. Huang Mao said as he left the room. After Huang Mao left, Dio immediately knocked the women out and waited for Huang Mao's return. Dio knew that Huang Mao would probably bring many backup, or maybe a totally different group might knock on his door soon. He was already familiar with this type of scam, Huang Mao would come with some thugs and accuse him of adultery or many other types of criminal acts and threaten to report Dio to the police. A normal foreigner most likely would be scared of the possibility of them serving jail time in a foreign country and thus will be trapped to accept whatever condition that the thugs offered. But Dio already knew what to do in this type of situation. The Yakuza was confused as they didn't hear any sound from Dio's room, they couldn't even see inside the room as the camera was blocked by Dio's backpack. They began to wonder whether Dio knew about their scheme or not. As their suspicion arose, they just quickly walked toward Dio's room. As they arrived at Dio's room, they immediately entered without knocking, after all they had the key to the room. Once they entered the room, the scene in front of them surprised them all, they saw Dio was sitting on a chair beside the bed while the two women that they left with Dio were fast asleep while still fully clothed. The situation became very awkward as they didn't expect something like this ever happened, and Dio didn't say anything either. The hotel service here was really good, what are you all doing here? Are you here to take my picture? Dio asked innocently. Tie him up. We have to keep him silent. A man said as he saw that everyone else didn't know what to do. The Yakuza's immediately surrounded Dio to capture him. They were a little bit angry as they saw it was like they were being played by Dio. They were also a little bit annoyed by Huang Mao for leaving Dio without confirming his identity. Dio immediately summoned the, hanged man, and immediately gave him order. Kill everyone except the two women on the bed. Dio said as he ordered the, hanged man. The, hanged man, immediately obeyed Dio's order and began to slice the throat of the Yakuza's. The Yakuza's in the back were startled as their friend began to fall one by one with no clear reasoning. They tried to escape, but it was all too late, hanged man, was killing them all too fast. Until Huang Mao, the last person was left frozen on the floor, scared shitless. Hanged man, killed Huang Mao without any pity and immediately returned to Dio's left eye afterward. Dio could feel a little bit disappointed from, hanged man, he knew that this kind of people wasn't enough to satisfy the, hanged man, but, he didn't have that kind of enemy as of the moment. Dio immediately rummaged through every corpse right away, he took their cell phones and every bit of cash that the Yakuza's had on their wallets. After that, he took his backpack and walked outside of the hotel with another disguise. Half an hour later, the strong smell of blood attracted a nearby hotel guest, and once they saw the gory scene inside the room, he screamed loudly, 
alerting the hotel staff and everyone else at the hotel. Dio threw the phone that he got earlier as he couldn't use it, everything was in Japanese, and furthermore, the phone was full of encoded application. He also couldn't go into any hotel, for he didn't bring any identification card on him, sure the thugs earlier had some driver ID, but he wasn't keen on using any of their identity. And thus, Dio resorted to walking around Akihabara to taste any Japanese food that struck his fancy, he also met a woman who was surprisingly eye-catching and had a good chit-chat with her to the point that she even invited Dio to her house. But after following the woman back to her house, Dio felt pity. Obviously, not everyone was as fortunate as he was, so, after he entered the woman's house, Dio immediately made her fall asleep without doing anything. Dio sighed and took a rest himself, for he was having quite a hectic day himself. The next day, Dio woke up early. He made himself breakfast and left the woman a quite sum of cash that he got from the Yakuza's earlier and immediately left toward a nearby store to buy an international calling card. After that, he found a phone booth and quickly called Tony to pick him up. Dio called Tony several times, but he didn't answer any of Dio's call, and thus Dio kept trying relentlessly as he knew that Tony was still immersed in studying the adamantium, or he was in the SHIELD headquarter, studying the destroyer's armor. Dio's relentless call finally got through, Tony answered the call with an annoyed tone. This better be a good call. No matter who you are, I will light your house on fire if it isn't. Tony said annoyedly. Hey Tony, it's me. Dio said hastily. Dio. What the hell? Why is your number showing Japan area code? Are you in Japan? Tony asked curiously. Where are you? I have to make sure you are alone first. Dio said casually. Yeah, I am alone. You are free to talk now. I assume you are not in Japan for a holiday, right? Tony said sarcastically. Shut up. I have obtained the second material for my blade. Now I have a favor to ask. Dio said casually. Now I am interested, what do you need me to do? Tony asked curiously. I need you to pick me up here, I have caused some trouble that makes it hard for me to travel with any convenient method right now. Dio said a little bit annoyed. Sure, Jarvis has already locked on your position, but tell me, what did you do in Japan? Did you burn a temple or something? Tony asked amusedly. Shut up, Tony. Not this time. Dio said while ending the call. Now he had to find another source of money to survive a little while until Tony arrived. Jarvis, connect me with Pepper quickly. Tony said as he ordered Jarvis. He wanted to prepare his flight to Japan ASAP. Meanwhile, in Shield's headquarter, Nick Fury was having another headache as he received a report from his field officer in Japan. In the report, a video showing that Prince Chala and Princess Suri was fighting against an unknown man with an advanced flying machine as their background. Fury knew that this flying machine must be Wakandan aircraft as he already knew that Wakanda wasn't as poor in decline as the world thought. But the important thing was the man that they were fighting with, who was this man? Why would the Wakanda royal family fight him in person? This kind of question really made his brain spin. He has already used the SHIELD's database that almost covered every single person's record in the world, but he couldn't find the guy. One thing that Nick hated the most was not knowing things that were right in front of his eyes. Nick had suspected that the unknown man was Dio because he also disappeared without any notice, but his resource told him that Dio was having a vacation in China. If that was the truth, then who was this unknown man? Colson. Head to my office immediately. Nick said to the intercom. Not long after that, Coulson came to the office with the signature smile on his face. Did we have any high-ranking agent in Japan who was free right now? Nick asked Coulson immediately. I think Barton is available, he is currently in Sapporo, dealing with another Hydra base. Coulson answered casually. Great, tell him and several agents in Japan to investigate this video. Nick said as he showed the video Chala fighting against an unknown assailant. I will see what I can do, but I am afraid they may be too busy dealing with the Hydra right now. There is not much manpower left after Hydra takes over. Coulson said sarcastically. Enough said, agent. A new batch of agents that have been cleared of any potential harm to the shield has been confirmed. They would come in soon enough. Coulson nodded his head while pertaining his signature smile, 
although he wasn't satisfied with the director's answer as a newbie wouldn't have a good mission assessment in the first few missions that they were assigned to. What about the captain, director? Is he ready to be deployed? Coulson asked casually. No. He still had so much to catch up, 70 years is a long time. Nick said as he rubbed his head. How about Dr. Banner? Have we found his whereabouts? Nick asked. Yes, I believe we were already homing in his location, Director. Coulson said with a smile. Good. Just observe him for now. Nick said dismissively. Akihabara was the center of Tokyo's culture, but it was a pity that Dio was never able to come to this place in his past life. But now, he didn't have any interest in exploring this place as his interest was no longer the same as his previous life. But not with Tony Stark with all his eccentric nature chose to hold his international exhibition in the dead center of Akihabara, so Dio had no choice but to spend his money on the accommodation to come to Akihabara and also bought an Iron Man's mask to blend in with the rest of the Iron Man's fans. Dio saw that many cosplayers came to the event with their best costume in play, but the best costume out of all of them immediately came from the sky, demanding attention from all people that attended the event. People began to shout as Iron Man took the platform. Dio also saw that Tony invited many girls Iron Man's cosplayers to come to the stage with him, Dio sighed as he realized this was just Tony was, and he should have known better, even though he already vowed to never cheat on Pepper ever, his playboy side still popped up from time to time. It wasn't until the stage performance was over that he had the chance to get close to Tony as Tony immediately opened a meet and greet session with his fans after. But it was still not to Dio's liking as he still had to queue with the other Iron Man fans to get close to Tony. Dio saw that Tony kept flattering the ladies while taking a short time with his male fans. Dio was speechless with Tony's behavior, but he must endure it as there was no other scientist who could make his weapon now. You want to take a picture with me? Sure, if it's someone else, I would refuse, but you are pretty, I wouldn't mind. Tony said as he took a picture with a girl, but as the camera was about to take their picture, the girl kissed Tony on the cheek without Tony's consent. Tony then sent the girl away after that. Jarvis, make sure that photo is deleted, don't let it get into the internet. Tony said to Jarvis as he was afraid that Pepper would get the wrong idea later. No problem, sir. It's already done. Jarvis answered into Tony's earpiece almost immediately. After that girl, Dio's turn finally arrived. Now, what is your name, and for whom did I have to sign this photo of mine for? Tony asked Dio, who was still in his disguise and wearing an Iron Man's mask. Dio then slipped a piece of paper to the table that had, it's me. We have to leave immediately, written on it. Tony immediately noticed that the man in front of him was none other than Dio, and he smirked as he wanted to cause some scene for Dio. Now, I have noticed that you are wearing my mask meticulously, you have to be my big fan, aren't you? Tony said a bit too loudly, causing some laugh from the line behind Dio. Tony also signed the Iron Man's photo with an extra heart and kiss symbol beside it and giving that piece of a signed photo to Dio. Hey, don't make a scene, I will end this meet and greet soon. Tony whispered to Dio as he hugged him. Dio wanted to smash the photo to Tony's head as soon as he saw the sign but decided not to and stepped aside to let the next person met with Tony. Dio was eager to leave this place as soon as possible. After the person after Dio was done taking pictures with Tony, Tony stood up from his seat and immediately announced that he must cut the event short as he said that he had to be in another place soon. The audience began to sigh and whine as they failed to meet with Tony Stark, the Iron Man personally. Don't fret. I will take 10 people from the crowd with me back to the USA. Consider it a paid vacation from the Iron Man. These 10's expenses will be paid fully by the Stark Industries. Tony said with a smirk on his face. The crowd began to cheer wildly as they were excited to get a free vacation to the USA. Tony then began to choose nine women from the crowds that caught his attention, almost causing a riot as he walked towards the crowds without any bodyguards beside him. These nine women were wearing a revealing Iron Man's costume, which was the reason Tony picked them. Even though he said that he was no longer a playboy, he still showed the playboy's trait. Now, for the last one, I have to pick a man. I don't want the world to think of me as unfair now, wouldn't I?" Tony said playfully. The crowd cheered once again, but this time, many men tried to draw Tony's attention as they began to shout for Tony to pick them, 
some of them even flirted with Tony as they thought that they would get Tony's attention that way. Tony felt chills as he heard the men began to flirt with him, and thus, he immediately pointed towards Dio. It's you. The gentleman with Iron Man mask. Tony said casually. With the last person picked, I hope that you guys continue to live in peace and enjoy your life. Tony said as he walked out of the event with the 10 people that he picked in tow. After arriving in New York, Tony then let Happy handle the rest of the women that he brought from Japan and immediately returned to his villa with Dio while he was still in his disguise. People were a little confused about Tony's behavior, and some even made a speculation that Tony has changed his preference somehow. Once on the villa, Dio immediately dragged Tony to the boxing ring. Dio easily overpowered Tony without breaking a sweat. Come on. How could your physical endurance be this bad? Aren't you the famous Iron Man? Come on, get up. Don't be a pussy. Dio said tauntingly. It was his way to pay Tony back for his action earlier towards Dio, but surely this was all just a friendly practice, Dio had no intention to hurt Tony, physically. Tony immediately got up as he felt Dio hurt his pride, he knew that he had no chance to win against Dio as he never even won against Happy before. Tony had no physical strength, as he put all his effort into the Iron Man armor. But as soon as he got up, Dio then threw a body blow directly to Tony's chest, knocking Tony once again to the mat. This time, Tony ignored all Dio's taunting words as he really felt all his strength left his body. Seeing that Tony had no more stamina to get up and continue to practice his boxing, Dio immediately took off his gloves and immediately went to take a bath. Dio took his time to clean himself and rest for the night. However, once he woke up, he noticed that his backpack that contained the vibranium wasn't where he left it anymore, and so he immediately went down toward Tony's workshop. And sure enough, he saw Tony was still analyzing the metal passionately. Where did you get this from? Tony said curiously. It's better if you don't know. Dio said solemnly. Is it compatible with the adamantium? I want this thing to be one of the materials for my blade. Dio said curiously. I need to test it out to reach a definite conclusion for that, but did you know this thing is super rare? I know this is the main material for Captain America's shield, and that is the only vibranium that I know existed. Tony said excitedly. I know that, but did you know which one is stronger, between this and adamantium? Dio said casually. Well, if you look at the characteristic of the metal, adamantium is definitely stronger, once it changed from its liquid stage to the solid stage, not even a nuclear bomb would be able to destroy it, but according to my father's research and my earlier research, vibranium excelled at absorbing energy, particularly the kinetic energy, that meant the vibranium was more suitable for defense, while adamantium was more suitable for offense. Tony said, stating the fact. So, it doesn't really matter which one is stronger because each of them has a different build. Dio asked for confirmation. Well, that was only my opinion so, I have to test it further to know the needed fact. Tony said casually. Well, if that was your opinion, then vibranium wouldn't be suitable to be a part of my weapons, right? Dio asked curiously. No, that's not what I'm saying. I mean that vibranium was more efficient as defensive equipment, but if it is used as an offensive weapon, it will still be a high-quality weapon. The most important thing here is how to make sure that the vibranium and adamantium wouldn't lose their characteristic once we fuse them together. Tony said as he explained his thought to Dio. Dio fell silent for a while, trying to comprehend Tony's words, but he immediately gave up. Well, I will leave it to you, since you clearly knew what you are doing, but I still want the vibranium to be incorporated into the blade. Dio said solemnly. But I am still curious on how did you obtain this metal. I know it was so rare that the shield itself was having a problem finding any. Tony asked Dio one more time. Dio knew that Tony had caught up on him, Dio knew that there is no way Tony would believe that he found this rare metal anywhere in Japan. Tony would have suspected that he was only in Japan as an escape to get out of his real trouble. But despite all that, Dio still didn't say anything and kept trying to change the topic of their conversation. He couldn't say that he was getting his hand on the vibranium in somewhat illegal activities. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. After all, Wakanda hasn't established any diplomatic relations with other countries outside the African continent. Dio also knew that his promise to the heir of Wakanda that he was just borrowing the vibranium and would pay them back later was completely outlandish. 
There was no telling what Wakanda would need from him later, and that was why he didn't answer any of Tony's question regarding the vibranium. Tony himself has stopped asking after not having any answer from Dio, and thus he completely submerged himself back to his work on the metal, the research on the two metals was enough to excite him. After Dio returned from Tony's place, he immediately opened his restaurant back, causing an alert in Nick Fury's office. Once Dio got the call from Nick, Dio kept telling him about his vacation in China and didn't know anything about Chala or Wakanda. Even though Nick knew that Dio was lying, without any proof, he couldn't do anything about it. In the meantime, the fusion between the adamantium and the vibranium was proven to be a lot harder than it should, Tony has done 23 trials to fuse the two metals together, but it didn't seem to work. There was no progress with Destroyer's armor either, he couldn't find anything on Earth that could damage it, and it was starting to hurt his pride. But Tony turned his frustration into an inspiration, he began to shut himself in his workshop and began researching all the metal at the same time to find anything that he could use. Three months have passed, and Tony finally called Dio and told him to meet him again in his villa. Dio was excited as he knew that Tony probably had a breakthrough about the metals and the progress of making his blade. Now, I will make it quick so that it would be easier for both of us. I have news for you, good news and bad news. Tony said casually. You mean, you found a way to merge the metals, but you lack the critical material for it? Dio asked knowingly. Great, you catch on fast. Tony said sarcastically. What material do you need? Dio asked casually, ignoring Tony's sarcastic word. It is the metal that makes up the destroyer's armor. I have researched its characteristics, and it was perfect to become the bonding agent for vibranium and adamantium. But this is where the bad news comes. I couldn't extract anything from that pile of scrap. In fact, I couldn't find anything that could damage it. Tony said frustratingly. Don't make it harder for me Tony, I know that you have found something else to replace that metal, don't you? If not, you will not call me here to waste your time. Dio said annoyedly. Well, look at that. You are a genius in disguise, aren't you? You know, I would never disappoint my believer so, here is the good news. I have developed a fusion agent that has the same characteristic as the destroyer's metal, but I need a little sample from it, and I also need you to join me while forging your blade. But don't be too happy yet, even with that said, the probability of success is only at 30 dash, Tony said excitedly. Now, when do we start? Dio asked casually. Well, as soon as you get the sample of that destroyer's armor. Tony said casually. Dio immediately went to the Triskelion building as soon as he left Tony's villa, he needed to get the sample that Tony was asking for inside the shield's base as soon as possible. The issue here was only to get past Nick Fury's observation. As soon as he got there, he was blocked by an agent who said that he needed a pass issued by Director Fury to enter the building. This was all because of the Hydra's incident earlier, the SHIELD has upped their security measure to the point of complete lockdown. So, to answer the agent's question about his pass, Dio punched the metal wall beside the agent's head, resulting in many agents instantly arrived at Dio's location, ready with their firearms. I don't know if Natasha ever told you about me, but I absolutely hated it when someone points a gun at me. Dio said coldly. The place suddenly felt chilling as Dio was prepared to break every arm that was holding a gun towards him, but Coulson arrived, breaking the intense situation. Hey, put down your weapons agent, if you didn't want to spend the rest of your life in the hospital. Coulson said casually. All agents immediately lowered their guns and returned to their designated locations. I am sorry about that, they don't really know about you as they are new agents who recently passed the test. Coulson said casually as always. Director Fury is waiting for you, you could walk straight in. Coulson said still with his signature smile. Dio then walked inside S.H.I.E.L.D.'s base while following Coulson to Fury's office. The veteran agent inside the base was all shook their head as they knew what happened outside, thinking those new agents sure were brave, stopping Dio like that. You want a small piece of the armor from the destroyer? Fury asked curiously. Before Dio asked for it, the piece had a small value, and now that Dio came to the S.H.I.E.L.D.'s headquarter, Fury realized that the small piece really had some hidden value that he didn't know before. Yes. I don't think we have to do this back and forth. I really want that piece. So, let's strike a bargain for it. Dio said confidently. No, before that, 
May I ask what will you do with that piece? Fury asked curiously. Remember when I told you I really wanted a weapon? Dio said annoyedly. Fury froze on the spot as he realized how valuable the small piece really was, if it could be tempered into a weapon, it would have an amazing value. Then, you have all other materials already? Fury asked curiously. Probably, it doesn't really matter. Dio said casually. Dio didn't really care if Fury realized that he was really the one who stole the adamantium from the army or the vibranium from Wakanda, as he suspected that Fury had long known that it was him all along. But Fury's word after that really annoyed him to the core. I am sorry, according to the shield's regulation, any alien item that has come to earth and in possession of shield wasn't allowed to fall for the outside party. Fury said solemnly. Now, how about I trade it with another metal that was currently in my possession? Would you agree? Dio asked confidently. Well, it depends. If it's adamantium that you speak of, I am not that interested in it. Fury said as he sipped his coffee. I have vibranium on my possession right now. You know how valuable that metal was, in fact, I believe it was the main material used to make the famous shield that was used by the famous Captain America in World War II, am I correct? Dio said with a smirk on his face. Hearing the name Vibranium from Dio's mouth, Fury was all ears. Vibranium? Did you really have this thing? Fury asked curiously. Now, I wouldn't lie, would I? So, do you accept my term or not? Dio asked Fury confidently. Fury was silent for a while, contemplating his choices and options. Dio believed that Fury wouldn't refuse his offer, but complete to Dio's surprise, the next word that came out from Fury's mouth was unexpected. I will refuse your term for now, but I don't think we're done making deals just yet. Fury said confidently to Dio. Agent, bring me item HMZ immediately. I will wait in my office. Fury said to his agent through his phone. After a while, an agent came to Fury's office with a suitcase in his hand. Fury immediately dismissed the agent and opened the suitcase to show Dio the piece of destroyer's armor. This is what you want, correct? Fury asked confidently. Dio was confused as the next thing he knew Fury was sliding the suitcase to Dio's direction, completely giving Dio the piece he needed without so much a demand. Now, what the hell do you want, Fury? I know that you will not give it away just like that. So, do you want me to be part of your stupid Avenger program? Dio asked annoyedly. No, of course not. I don't like to force others to be part of my mission. I think it's better for this piece to be used toward a friend's benefit, don't you think so? But then again, a friend should help each other, wouldn't you agree? Fury said as he smirked confidently towards Dio. For the first time since entering the building, Dio wanted to leave and forget anything about this small piece of metal. But it was already too late. You won. I accept your bargain. Now I will take this and leave. Don't regret your decision later. Dio said as he took the suitcase and immediately walked toward the door. Of course, if there is anything you need from the shield in the future, don't be shy to call me. Fury said with a satisfied smirk in his face. Okay, I hope I can sleep peacefully tonight. Dio said as he walked gloomily out of Fury's office. Three days have passed since Dio gave the destroyer armor piece to Tony, and Tony stuffed his workshop with so many equipment used for forging Dio's blade. His workshop looked like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. I will start in a second, but you remember everything I need you to do, right? Tony said to Dio while looking slightly unsure. Relax, I will do my best. Dio said as he stood on the spot that Tony has specially made for him. That was the only piece of destroyer armor that they had, meaning that if they failed, Tony must think of another way to forge Dio's blade. Energy output 80%, a machine's voice informed Tony. Not long after, Dio saw that the vibranium began to turn into liquid and merge with the adamantium, this was one of the characteristics of the vibranium. It will lose its original property after introduced into a certain sound wave. Tony has read the information that his father described in his journal, and that was why he knew how to forge the vibranium properly, but he couldn't use all of his father's method, because his father forged offensive equipment while Tony himself was forging offensive equipment. Not long after, the machine's voice once again informed that the sound wave was stable at 93 at the same time, 
the vibranium was decomposed into a tiny little piece that was almost invisible. Start compression. Tony said as he activated the arc reactor in the corner of the room. He wanted to use clean energy from the arc reactor to compress the vibranium and adamantium into a mold that he has designed. Inject adamantium to the mold. Tony said commandingly. At the same time, the machine near the mold began to inject liquid adamantium to the mold, and once it was filled, the decomposed vibranium was moved to the top of the mold as the machine began to compress it together. Now, this is the most crucial part that I told you about. I need your power here as I will turn back the vibranium back to its solid state. So, tell me when you're ready. Tony said solemnly. Dio took a deep breath and shook his head a couple of times to get into the groove, I am ready. Let's do this. Dio said confidently. Tony nodded and immediately moved the mechanical arm to put the destroyer armor piece to the mold with the liquid adamantium. Jarvis, prepare to turn off the sound wave stabilizer. Tony ordered. Countdown, 3, 2, 1. Tony said as a signal to Dio. Dio immediately covered the mold with his Hammond energy to prevent it from breaking apart. But still, as the sound wave stabilizer was turned off, the adamantium and the vibranium began to collide wildly, the mold was showing a crack as it couldn't contain all the energy generated from the fusion of the two metals. As he observed the forging process, Dio finally realized why Tony needed his help to forge this weapon. Tony knew that somehow Dio was able to activate the property inside the destroyer armor, and that property was dark matter. Dio now realized that the magic inside the destroyer armor was none other than dark matter energy. So, Tony told Dio to hold the mold with his power to prevent it from breaking apart and to activate the property of the destroyer armor piece to fuse the adamantium and the vibranium together. The destroyer armor piece had another property to absorb energy and channel it safely to a certain path, Tony had also created this path to contain the excess energy from the destroyer armor piece. Everything was going very smoothly according to Tony's plan, but a problem soon showed its tail. The dark matter container that Tony has made to contain the energy from the destroyer armor piece began to beep and flashed a yellow color, meaning that the container was reaching a full capacity. Jarvis, accelerate the energy flow. Tony shouted, ordering Jarvis to circulate the energy inside the container. Sir, too much energy for circulation, I am afraid the circuit wouldn't be able to handle it. Jarvis said warning Tony. It will only cause a large-scale outage, but if we don't do that, this place would be bombarded along with 20 kilometers worth of area. Tony said nervously. Wait, let me try something. Dio suddenly said, interrupting Tony. What? Did you have some means to circulate the energy? Tony said as he looked at Dio nervously. I couldn't explain it now. Let me try first. Dio said as he increased the Hammond energy output that he used to contain the mold with. In his mind, Dio knew that energy could cancel out each other so, all he had to do was increase his own Hammond energy to the point that it would block the dark matter energy that the destroyer armor piece released. Tony clicked his tongue in desperation and immediately suited up his Iron Man suit, but he knew that the suit wouldn't exactly save him from dark matter explosion. Forced Ripple Breathing Dio shouted as he used the Hammond technique to perceive his surroundings. He had to use this technique in order to see the dark matter energy from the mold and thus able to react in time to block it. But Dio could only do so much, the dark matter energy proved to be a challenge even for him, his Hammond energy was being sucked, he didn't know how long he would be able to keep this up. Tony at the moment was able to breathe in relief, the data showed that the dark matter energy had been reduced significantly, but after looking at Dio and noticed him sweating all over his face, Tony knew that Dio wouldn't be able to keep whatever he was doing for a long time. So, he immediately made his move. Jarvis. Turn on the energy pipeline transference, increase the overload rate, and put the excess energy to the entire villa. Tony ordered Jarvis confidently. Right away, sir. Jarvis said, and as soon as he said so, the light bulb on the entire house exploded, and a burnt smell filled the entire villa, but it wasn't from fire but from the fried circuit inside every electrical appliance inside the villa. Tony and Dio kept struggling to make this one chance they had success. Not long after that, the mold began to turn green, meaning that the fusion inside was a success, but Tony knew that it wasn't over just yet, he still had to diffuse the dark matter energy trapped by Dio's power. The mold began to crack, 
followed by the safety glass shattered all over the place. Dio immediately threw, Anubis, towards the cracking mold, he hoped that the weapon inside was good enough to be the host of, Anubis, he has done all he could, and now he surrendered it all to fate. But, as soon as the stand card hit the cracking mold, the dark matter energy exploded. Dio was surprised, but he was quick enough to summon the, the world, he immediately used the, the world, special skill to stop the time, but as he only had 100. Hammond energy left, he had to be quick. He grabbed Tony and immediately sprinted as fast as he could and as far as he could in a matter of a second. The time resumed, and because of the dark matter energy contained in the mold wasn't as much as in the container, the explosion only blasted 10 meters from the mold, but it also meant that Tony's villa was partly destroyed. Not only that, but all electrical appliances in Tony's villa were also destroyed. What happened just now? Tony asked as he recovered from the shock. He was confused as he didn't feel any explosion trauma on his body and the fact that he somehow got away from the explosion radius. But as he looked at Dio on his side, he knew that Dio had something to do with it. Dio was panting, completely exhausted from having almost all his Hammond energy depleted. Did we fail? Or did we succeed? Tony asked curiously. Dio could only shake his head as he didn't know himself, he had not thought of saving the weapon when the explosion happened. But he knew even if he tried, he wouldn't be able to save it with his time stop ability, the weapon was inside the mold, and the mold was completely covered by dark matter energy. I'll check it out now. Tony said unsurely. He immediately walked back into the place that was once his workshop and started looking for any form of weapon lying around the explosion site. A few minutes later, Dio who has recovered some of his Hammond energy back, could finally walk again. As soon as he stood up, he heard Tony was calling for him. It's here. We succeed, it's all intact. Tony shouted excitedly. Tony flew toward Dio with a dark red long knife-like object on his hand. The blade was about a meter long, but Dio noticed that it was slightly crooked and the body of the blade was decorated by an Egyptian-like tribal tattoo and it was also covered by a scale that looked like the destroyer armor. Tony immediately handed it over to Dio, and as he inspected the blade closely, Dio couldn't help but notice that Tony was frowning slightly. Hey, does it have the same weight as what you intend it to be? Dio asked Tony curiously. No, it doesn't, it looks completely far from what I designed it to be, but hey, we still succeed in making the one and only weapon of its kind. But I could say that you are still lucky that the weapon is still usable at the least, it didn't have any defect except for the extremely short handle. Tony said as he tried to act casual. To be honest, I don't think that we could succeed in the first place, so I would say that we are extremely lucky this time. Tony said solemnly. Dio nodded as he thought the same thing as Tony did, but Dio guessed that the weapon's shape was related to, Anubis, that he threw at the last moment. After all, he could see some Egyptian influence on the weapon shape. But Dio began to wonder what would happen if he injected some of his Hammond energy into the blade. And thus, he immediately did, he assumed that the only thing that would happen was activating, Anubis, but he was soon proven to be wrong. The first thing that happened was he established a connection with, Anubis, proving that the blade was successfully inhibited by, Anubis, and the second thing that happened as he injected more Hammond energy inside the blade was it began to shake. The blade on Dio's hand was beginning to change the form, the sharp part of the blade began to bend more than it already did before, and the short handle that was also covered with scales began to elongate, and the scales also covered half of the blade part, making it look like an intricate work of art. As soon as it finished transforming, Dio was shocked to see its final shape. It was a scythe, a deep dark red scythe. Dio raised the scythe to the air and saw that the weapon was bigger than before, the sickle itself was almost two meters long. Tony, who was beside Dio the entire time, was also shocked beyond belief at the weapon's transformation. The change was outrageous. Not only it couldn't be explained by science, but it also turned into a scary looking weapon. A few hours later, Tony and Dio arrived at Stark Building. Tony's villa was completely in wreck, there was nothing else they could do over there, so they left it as soon as Tony called a team of engineers to repair his villa. Both couldn't wait to test out the weapon, and that was why they came to the Stark building as it was also equipped with a bunch of research equipment capable of testing out the weapon. But Pepper, who was on the building, 
immediately screamed at Tony as soon as she heard the report that Tony has successfully blown up their house, and she also made Tony promise that he wouldn't destroy the Stark building too. Although, in the end, she still couldn't believe Tony 100%, she let him do what he wanted and evacuated everyone near the lab that Tony will use. Besides being homeless once again, I think we are good. Tony said to Dio as he equipped his Iron Man's armor once again. Dio nodded his head helplessly because he knew that there was no way he could ask for the money that Tony owed anymore. Tony's villa was worth around $30 million, and that was not including any electrical appliance that he had in that villa. Dio assumed that the total cost of the weapon in his hands right now was around $100 million, which was too much. Let's test the blade's sharpness first. I am curious about how sharp it is. I will set up some alloy of different strengths, see if you can cut them down and report back on how much force you need to cut them down, okay? Tony said excitedly. Dio nodded his head as he understood what Tony asked him to do. Dio then immediately stood in front of a neatly placed alloy plates with different thickness. Because he wasn't that confident of the weapon yet, he used a little bit of force as he swung the scythe toward the alloy plates. The next scene completely shocked Tony and Dio completely, all of the alloy plates that Tony had prepared was cut in half, but not only that, the weapon was completely soundproof, there was no sound at all as the weapon cut through the air and cut through the alloy plates. The weapon even showed no resistance at all as it cut through the alloy plates like a hot knife through butter. Dio swung the side vigorously through the air several times to hear if there was any sound, but there was no sound whatsoever. Tony's eyes widened in disbelief, this weapon was really of high quality. It seems that there is only one test left that we can do for this weapon. Tony said with a sour tone on his voice. Dio would brag about this weapon later, he was sure of it. After Tony was done testing anything that he could think of from the scythe, he looked at Dio silently in complete disbelief. The weapon has surpassed every test that Tony had done, surpassing even his highest expectation. The weapon even had the power to absorb and store any form of energy and use it for its own benefit. Tony even used the sound wave stabilizer to see if he could weaken or break the weapon, but it was a complete failure. The weapon flaw from the vibranium material was completely erased. This was a weapon of myth. After holding his weapon, Dio tried to communicate with the Anubis inside the blade, but he didn't receive any response from it. So, Dio stopped pestering it any. Further for the moment, he thought that he would find a way to activate Anubis later. Dio also named the scythe, Grim Reaper, because, Anubis, was the god of death of Egyptian myths, and it was only right to name it, Grim Reaper, his western counterpart. The name itself also implied that whoever became Dio's enemies will see the death god sooner than their time would be. Dio also thought of naming the scythe, Goddess of Death, before, but as he remembered that Marvel had the real Goddess of Death, he refrained from using it, for it may cause trouble in the future. Time flew, and suddenly, it was already August. While Dio's restaurant was stable once again, the new threat was coming close sooner than Dio had expected himself. Loki had shown himself on Earth. Sirens could be heard from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s West Division's secret base, the people ran outside in chaos as many helicopters and heavy armed vehicles were trying to evacuate every personnel inside the base. But Nick Fury rushed in, clearly having his own objective that he desperately had to save. S.H.I.E.L.D.'s West Division secret base was originally NASA Space Radiation Center, and later S.H.I.E.L.D. turned it into their own accelerator test center. It once carried out the S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Pegasus project, which ended after the death of Dr. Lawson. Now, this place was used to research the weaponization of the cube. After the cube opened a wormhole that sucked in a strange staff, the scientist working on the cube was baffled, but not until they were killed by Loki, who suddenly appeared near the staff and began on his killing spree. There was no one who could stop him as he also placed Hawkeye under his mind control. In despair to prevent Loki from escaping with the cube, Nick Fury activated the base's self-destruction system. But unfortunately, Loki, Hawkeye, and Dr. Selvig escaped nonetheless with the cube, leaving a frustrated Director Fury in front of a destroyed base. A prelude to the war in the middle of the city of New York. The next day, Dio was still opening his business as usual, but as the last guest left the restaurant, a person that he hasn't seen for a long time suddenly showed up again. Hey beautiful, you are that IRS agent, right? We'll ask flirtatiously. You have good memories. So, can you be a dear and step outside for a couple of minutes? 
I need to talk with your boss in private. Natasha said to Will with a flirtatious look that a normal man wouldn't be able to resist. But Will was different, he was loyal to Dio no matter what happened, so he just stood there waiting for Dio to confirm whether he should step out for a while or not. But as soon as Dio saw Natasha, he nodded to Will, signaling that he was okay, so Will immediately stepped out to smoke for a while. Natasha. I haven't seen you in a while. I heard that you have been on a mission as of late. Dio said as he offered a drink to Natasha. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while, but you are still weird. Couldn't you throw me a glass of wine instead of water? Natasha asked teasingly. It's still working time, I'm personally a believer of no drinking while working kind of guy. But maybe I could ask you out tonight? Dio asked teasingly. Thank you very much, but I am afraid we don't have time for that. A new trouble has arisen, this time the Asgardian who claimed himself as Loki appeared inside S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secret base and stole the cube, a weapon that was being researched there. We need your help. Natasha said hopefully. Hearing Loki's name and Natasha's hopeful eyes, Dio tried to look away in annoyance. He didn't expect Loki would come this fast, but fortunately for Dio, the plot of the movie was still the same. But Dio had already predicted the plot wouldn't change if S.H.I.E.L.D. were still researching the Cosmic Cube, Loki's arrival was inevitable. But he couldn't blame S.H.I.E.L.D., they didn't know that Loki will eventually target the cube and fearlessly charged inside the S.H.I.E.L.D.'s heavy armed base like it was nothing. The next thing that Dio started to think about was what role he needed to play in this upcoming war. But one thing that he knew for sure was New York would become a battlefield, and no one was safe after that. Dio also remembered that every little preparation that he had done to this day was for this upcoming war, and he relaxed a little bit and smiled to himself as he thought that maybe with his intervention, he could end this war earlier than it should. I need to know the detailed information of the incident, and also, what did the shield need me to do? Dio asked Natasha solemnly. Natasha was surprised as this was the first time that Dio agreed to help without any unusual demand. Dio agreed to help shield for now, but he also made sure that he won't join S.H.I.E.L.D. in any way. He knew that he had no obligation to help S.H.I.E.L.D., but he couldn't let the innocent people fall victim from this inevitable war, after all, Dio still had his own sense of justice, no matter how twisted it may be. But he also had his own hesitation about joining this war, he knew that after this, the Avengers would have their own dilemma to the public, for the people would demand them to compensate for the destruction of New York. Dio knew that was all bullshit. There was no way a group of people that risked their lives to fight against an evil army was responsible for the destruction of those people's shit. If Dio deals with that kind of people in the future, he won't hesitate to blow their heads off. For this sole reason, Dio couldn't and had no intention to be shackled. Natasha immediately relayed everything that Dio has said to Fury, and without hesitation, Fury agreed on Dio's term. Fury knew that agreeing to Dio's term was a breach on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s policy, but there was no middle ground on the safety of the entire human race. He couldn't be selfish and reject Dio's offer to help just because Dio didn't want to be part of the shield. So, knowing that the battle will take place in New York, Dio immediately called Will and all other people that he cared for and told them to take a vacation away from New York. Fortunately for Will, Dio also agreed to pay for all his expenses wherever he wanted to go. But for the rest of the people he cared for, he had to persuade them, such as Jessica and Kristen, who had their own work that they couldn't simply leave behind while Irene was still in school. Dio also cancelled all the reservations on his restaurant with a promise to reschedule soon, he also advised for all his guests to leave New York for the time being. He knew that his guest would have no reason to take his warning seriously, and thus he hoped that they wouldn't be caught on the battle. Dio then took Natasha to his villa, for he had to prepare some of his own necessity and a couple of things that he had to take before he went to Shield's base. He also took all the snails that he put on the aquascape on his villa. Look, you know this snail wasn't any normal snail, right? But it has more capabilities than communicating. It could keep you alive if your life is ever in danger. Dio said solemnly. So, make sure that you keep it on you at all times and don't kill it, I have enough of Coulson's incident. Fortunately, it can keep on splitting into another snail if the main body wasn't dead, but it could only split to the maximum of nine now. Dio added warningly. So, a total of ten persons could be included in this mind communication thing, including yourself? Natasha asked curiously. No, it's nine including me. The one that Coulson killed couldn't regenerate anymore. 
Dio said casually. Now, you know why I am so adamant on demanding a million dollar for what he did. Dio said confidently. So, this is the weapon that you and Tony built? Natasha said to change the topic of the conversation. The shield had noticed the strange electrical discharge and the explosion on Tony's villa, they also knew Tony and Dio had tested some kind of new weapon inside the Stark building soon after. So, Dio nodded, but he didn't explain anything regarding the, the Grim Reaper. Natasha knew how Dio was. Therefore she didn't pester about the weapon anymore. So, where to next? Dio asked Natasha casually. To Director Fury's location. Natasha said casually, but Dio noticed that there was something that Natasha hasn't said yet. You have other tasks, don't you? Dio asked knowingly. Well yeah, after I got you to Director Fury's location safely, I need to go to Kolkata to convince the Hulk to join us. You know, the more, the merrier. Natasha said sarcastically. Wow, I am hurt. It seems my presence is not enough. Dio said teasingly. Hold on. If it makes your ego any better, you are the hardest person in my book to convince. In fact, I've already prepared 32 different sets of scenarios to make sure you join us. Natasha said annoyedly. Thanks to you, all of my preparation is wasted. Natasha added sarcastically. Dio smiled as he felt satisfied with Natasha's annoyance. Perhaps I do need to listen to those 32 scenarios. Now, I am quite curious about what you have prepared for me. Dio said teasingly. I can say that one of them is a temptation. Kind of promising that there is nothing would happen afterward. Natasha said flirtatiously. Now, I am starting to regret agreeing too fast. Dio said jokingly. Whether Natasha promised that she wouldn't do anything afterward, Dio would never bring Natasha to his bed. First, Natasha was an 80-year-old hag, and the second was Dio had already seen Natasha as a family member, not a love interest. Are you seriously putting the fate of all humanity on the hands of a bunch freaks? The International Security Council questioned Nick Fury furiously. But Nick didn't care about any of their unreasonable requests and therefore, he continued with his plan confidently. Sir. Agent Romanoff and Mr. Dio have arrived. An agent reported to Nick casually. Nick Fury immediately regained his composure and told the agent to send Natasha and Dio in. A few minutes later, Dio and Natasha walked into Nick's office casually. I am a little bit shocked that you agreed to help almost immediately, it seems my investment earlier has finally paid off. Nick said sarcastically. Perhaps I have jumped to the conclusion a little bit too fast, if I may, you could start over again as I walk out of the door. Dio said teasingly. Forget it. Let's just talk about your payment now. Nick said annoyedly. Nick then nodded his head to Natasha, and she immediately left the room after that, it seemed Nick signaled for Natasha to do her other mission. Well, it seems I don't have any other option. Dio said casually. What do you want? Nick said solemnly. Well, all I need is delicious food and accommodation. I am a picky eater, and I am also picky when it comes to my sleep. And the second thing is that I am here as a guest of S.H.I.E.L.D., I am not your employee, and therefore, if I am unhappy, someone would also be unhappy. Dio said casually. That's all. Are you sure? Nick asked a little bit surprised by Dio's word. Of course not. Who do you think I am? I also charge S.H.I.E.L.D. for $100 a day as long as I am here. Dio said casually. Did I hear you, right? $100. Did you forget a few zeros there? Nick said in disbelief. Hey, I am not here to get rich. Dio said casually. Nick then stared at Dio seriously as if Dio was an imposter, but there was no telling, as Dio's personality was still the same as before, and so he agreed immediately. I heard that you and Tony had successfully created a superweapon, is it true? Can I have the honor to see it too? Nick said as he changed the subject of the conversation. There would come a time for that, be patient. Dio said as he smirked. A couple of days after, Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Natasha Romanoff, Tony Stark, Dio, and Nick Fury were assembled inside one room, Clint Barton and Thor were also supposed to be there, but Barton was still under Loki's spell, and Thor was still trying to find a way to get to Earth. 
Now, what can we do to find this Loki guy? We have the resource to scan the camera and phones all over the earth, but I am afraid it will take time to do all that. Nick said solemnly. As you finish doing that, the war would be here already. Steve said solemnly. You have to narrow the search scope. It would be faster that way. Banner said trying to give his input. And that is why you are here, doctor. Nick said solemnly. The cube that he stole emitted gamma radiation, and we hoped that you would be able to track him down with your expertise. Nick said solemnly. How many spectrometers did you have? Banner asked curiously. How many do you need? Nick countered. If you could contact all laboratories that have one and tell them to put the spectrometer on the roof and told them to set the spectrometer to calibrate and search for gamma rays. I will draft an algorithm to find the specific gamma wave that the cube released from your data. At least we can rule out a place where the gamma wave wasn't detected, and I also need a place to work. Banner said confidently. Agent Romanoff, could you please show Dr. Banner his workplace? Nick said politely, Banner wasn't any different from any scientists that he has met before, slightly introverted, and shy, but the real reason that Banner was called was none other than the Hulk. Romanoff and Banner soon left the room, and Nick immediately set his eyes to Tony. It pains me when you look at me like that. Tony said sarcastically. No time Tony, how much did you know about portals? I believe that Loki was planning to create a portal so that he could bring the alien army to Earth. It will be easier to predict his move if we know what the hell he needs next. Nick said solemnly. Nick Fury's analysis was correct, the only problem now was Dr. Selvig, he has already researched the cube for quite some time. The only one who could figure out Dr. Selvig's next move on Nick Fury's book was only Tony. Tony was a genius who could master any form of knowledge, and Nick hoped he knew what to think of next. In theory, a lot of things were necessary in order to create a portal, but the difficult thing to find is probably not difficult if Barton was with them. Tony said casually. So, what is it? Nick said annoyedly. Iridium. Dio said casually. Wow, I never knew you understand how thermonuclear astrophysics works, I thought you only had the knowledge of physics high school teacher. Tony said sarcastically. Tony. Not this time. Nick said annoyedly. Right, so yeah. Iridium. It can be used as a stabilizer, preventing the portal from collapsing by itself. It also works as the control so that they can control how big the portal would be and how long they want it to remain open. Tony said explaining his knowledge. Oh yeah, the other thing that they need is also high density energy to sustain the cube while it's active. Tony said as he remembered another essential thing to the portal. Does he need any specific type of energy? Steve asked curiously, but Tony was interrupted before he could answer as an agent barged in and reported that Loki had been sighted in Stuttgart, Germany. Heinrich Schaefer is in Stuttgart. Now it's clear that they are after the Iridium. Nick said determinately. Dio and the other Avengers members quickly arrived at Stuttgart, where they predicted Loki would appear. Sure enough, they immediately received a feed from a private party that Loki was indeed there and that he currently turned the entire party his captive. But as soon as Loki saw Captain America, he immediately bombarded the place, not caring for the life of the innocents around him. This was different than what Dio knew Loki would do, in MCU, Loki deliberately let himself captured by Captain America and then used some trickery to release the Hulk. So, Dio, who immediately realized that things were starting to change, immediately pulled out his, Grim Reaper, and chased Loki down. Dio didn't think much of the people around him as it was Tony and Captain America's job to save them, Dio focused his attention solely on Loki, Dio really wanted to kill this man. Even though Dio knew that Loki would redeem himself in the future, he wouldn't be able to change the consequences of his action right now. After all, if he killed Loki right now, neither the New York battle nor the Civil War would happen. Loki was looking at a strange man holding a horrifying weapon, Loki's mischievous look suddenly changed. He immediately replicated himself a bunch of times and immediately used the scepter power to make Dio kneel. The scepter had the mind gem as its core, in theory, only a few people could resist its mind-controlling ability. Tony who was nearby at the time instantly fell down from the sky and forced to kneel, Captain America was also forced to kneel, but he was still on the verge of resisting the mind gem, while it had no effect at Dio at all. Dio had a strong mental fortitude, 
making the mind gem rather useless against him. Dio then quickly swung his scythe towards Loki's replica and used, Hermit Purple, to attack Loki, but Dio was surprised as Loki was able to block, Hermit Purple's vine attack while slightly looking taken aback by the sudden attack, Dio began to wonder if it was possible that Loki had the ability to see his stands. Dio knew that Thor could somehow feel the stand's presence, but he still couldn't see it, was it because of Loki's proficiency in magic that allowed him to notice the stand image? Metal Silver Overdrive Dio said as he discharged a wave of his Hammond energy towards the Grim Reaper. Loki immediately used the scepter to block Dio's attack, and as Grim Reaper clashed against the scepter, an explosion immediately sent Loki flying while Dio was holding his ground with the protection of his Hammond energy. Loki, who fell on the ground, immediately searched for his scepter, and immediately felt terrified as he saw the scepter was broken beyond repair. This was the weapon that Thanos gave him, it had the power of the universe in it, how could a mortal weapon break it? Dio didn't care about Loki's disturbed expression at all and immediately jumped in to deal the finishing blow to Loki. Dio, wait. Don't kill him yet. Tony shouted from behind. Stop, we have to question him on the cube's whereabout. Captain America shouted worriedly. I surrender. Loki said while holding his hands up to make sure that he wasn't killed, but Dio was already determined to change the plot of the current story by killing Loki, but as soon as he swung the scythe towards Loki's head, a huge thunder struck Loki's location and, Grim Reaper, was immediately stopped by the Mjolnir. Thor's domineering figure immediately stood between Loki and Dio. You saved my life once again, brother. Loki said excitedly. Thor didn't reply to Loki's sarcastic comment but instead held Loki down and placed Mjolnir in Loki's chest to make sure that he couldn't go anywhere. Now, where is the cube, Loki? Thor asked furiously. Now, now. Don't start getting angry with me, brother. If it's not because of me, you wouldn't be able to return to Midgard. Loki said solemnly. No, this is all because of you. I thought you were dead as you fell into the abyss. Thor said angrily. I am sorry to interrupt, but you are holding our prisoner over there. We need him for further questioning down in the precinct. Tony said sarcastically. Do you know him? Captain America asked Tony as he felt Tony was talking to someone he knew. Well, he was the mythological Norse god, Loki the mischievous. He once tricked Odin to banish Thor to Earth without his godly power, and he also sent the destroyer armor to kill Thor, his own brother. Tony said annoyedly. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, I will talk to you once I find the cube and take Loki to prison. Thor said as he noticed Dio. Thor. Put him down. He stole the cube while also taking so many innocent lives. I can't let you take him away. Dio said coldly. Thor suddenly frowned as he felt that the timing his father, Odin, sent him to Midgard was too coincidental, it was obvious to Thor that Odin still didn't want Loki to die. Loki is Asgard's citizen. Therefore I have to take him to Asgard for trial. Thor said confidently. Loki was Thor's younger brother, even though he had a great affection towards Earth, he still had his responsibility for his family in Asgard. I hate to disappoint you, Thor. But this is Earth, we have our own law here. Dio said coldly. He doesn't want to let Loki get away this time, for Dio deemed that he was the root of all trouble in the future. Feeling that there is no way Thor would leave Loki in the Avengers's hand, Captain America immediately made his move. He ran towards Thor with his shield in hand. Thor, who also knew that he wouldn't be able to take Loki to Asgard peacefully, quickly called Mjolnir back and immediately swung it toward Captain America. However, Captain America successfully blocked the attack, and because of his shield's vibranium core, the shield successfully absorbed all the energy from the impact. Tony took it as a signal for him to attack too, he immediately shot Thor with his palm cannon with a bunch of small missiles to increase the firepower. During all this, Dio kept his eyes locked on Loki's position, he knew that Loki would try to escape, and he couldn't let that happen. As soon as Dio saw Loki made his move, he immediately ran toward Loki as fast as he could. Loki saw Dio coming, and because he knew that there was no way that he would win against Dio and his weird weapon head-on, Loki returned to his magic nature, he began to chant his spell once again, but Dio was too fast, he reached Loki before he could finish his spell. Loki immediately blocked Dio's scythe with his crumbling scepter once again, 
and fortunately for Loki, he succeeded once again on staying alive. Thor, who was blown away by Tony's attack, saw that Dio was currently battling his brother. Knowing that there was no way Loki would win against Dio, Thor immediately flew toward Loki in a flash and blocked Dio's next attack for him. The situation became quite troubling. Thor proved himself capable of defending Loki as he knew that Dio and the others wouldn't kill him and thus making his move quite confident. Moreover, Loki who was confident that Thor would always defend him began to chant another spell. Loki wasn't the most powerful individual in Asgard, in fact, he could be considered weak in front of many Asgardian warriors, but Loki had the strongest self-protection capabilities. He could survive tenaciously in any environment he was thrown into. Thor, you better get out of my way. Did you ever think that you could stop me? Dio said coldly. Don't you ever think I am weaker than you? I am not the mortal that you beat before, I have my divine power back now. Thor said as he slammed Tony with Mjolnir, hit Captain America with his lightning strike, and blocked Dio's attack with Mjolnir. Dio had enough. After knowing that, Grim Reaper, couldn't break through Mjolnir's defense, Dio immediately summoned the, the world, and ordered him to punch the unsuspecting Thor. Thor was smashed hard, he was sent flying into the nearest building, and Dio ordered for the, Hermit Purple, to bind Thor. Where do you think you're going, Mr. God? Dio said as he blocked Loki's escape. Loki carefully stepped back from Dio and bumped into Captain America's shield, Tony was also coming over while holding his palm cannon towards Loki. Loki immediately raised his hands, signaling his surrender. Tony and Steve looked at each other with a knowing look that their jobs were finally over for tonight, but at the same time, Dio was still holding on his weapon readily, Tony and Steve immediately understood that Dio had no intention to let Loki live. Hey, I already gave up. Loki said nervously. Tony and Steve immediately stepped forward and stopped Dio before he could get closer to Loki. Dio, stop. We still need to question him on the cube's position. We have to take him back alive. Tony said as he tried to reason with Dio. Dr. Banner would find the cube. This guy is cunning, it is better for everyone if he is dead. Dio said coldly. There is no doubt in Dio's mind that whatever Loki has planned, he wouldn't follow any of it. Although I don't really know your true intention for killing this guy, I have a task to take him alive. Mr. Stark, if you may, please escort our prisoner back to the base. Steve said confidently. Dio immediately laughed as he began to wonder if Steve was also under Loki's brainwashing power, he couldn't understand why there were so many people there trying to save Loki. But unbeknownst to everyone, Thor was already on top of everyone and immediately called a thunderstrike on Dio and everyone else. Fortunately for Dio and the others, they had their own means of protection, Dio with his Hammond energy, Steve with his vibranium shield, and Tony with his Iron Man armor. But Thor wasn't using the lightning to strike the others down, he was using the thunder as a distraction as he grabbed Loki and immediately flew away. Dio wouldn't have it Thor's way, he immediately shouted, the world, and the, the world, immediately stopped the time. Dio immediately chased Thor and jumped, he immediately deactivated, the world, s ability and time resumed like normal. At the same time, Thor was shocked as he saw Dio has already moved across the space and suddenly appeared beside him with his scythe. Thor was too surprised to react, and thus, Dio immediately swung the Grim Reaper, and successfully penetrated Loki's chest and crushed his heart. No dash, Thor roared horrifyingly. Loki fell from Thor's hand, lifeless. Dio knew that there would be a possibility that Thor would resent him for this, but Dio didn't regret killing Loki at all. As for the cube that Loki stole, Dio had faith that Dr. Banner would definitely find it, so there was no real need to keep Loki alive. Seeing Thor's distressed look, Dior silently retracted his weapon. But the next thing that he noticed made Dio slightly unnerved, he noticed that the scepter that Loki always held wasn't on the body anymore, meaning that either Loki had thrown it away somehow or Loki wasn't dead yet. Thor, Loki isn't. Dio said, but he was immediately interrupted by Mjolnir hitting him straight in the chest. He was flung into the nearby building and smashed the wall of the building. Thor, whose eyes were bloodshot from crying over the death of his little brother, picked up Loki's lifeless body gently and stood up. He felt anger that he never experienced before, as a result of this anger, the skies were filled with thunderclouds and occasional lightning. When a normal person saw this scene, 
there was no doubt that they would think that the doomsday was coming. Tony and Steve, who observed the fight from the sideline, were surprised by what happened. They began to wonder was the god really as powerful as the myth has foretold. But even if the myth was real, they wouldn't back off if it meant the god threatened the lives of the people on earth. At the same time, Thor roared and immediately charged in at Tony and Steve with Mjolnir at his hands, but unfortunately for Thor, Tony and Steve didn't back away, in fact, Steve immediately blocked Mjolnir's attack with his shield, resulting with another sonic sound wave. However, Thor didn't stop. He kept pounding Steve's shield with Mjolnir relentlessly, but Tony, who immediately flew, targeted Thor with every weapon that he had in his arsenal and instantly fired it at Thor as he saw Steve manage to make some distance. Tony then grabbed Steve and flew away from Thor to plan their next attack, but Thor immediately dropped them down from the skies as he threw his Mjolnir at Tony. Tony was put out balance and accidentally threw Steve to the ground below, but Steve immediately used his shield to cushion his fall. Natasha, who was piloting the Quinn jet, saw everything that happened down below, she immediately provided support and fired the machine guns that the Quinn jet had with two missiles towards Thor, this support from Natasha successfully prevented Thor from chasing after Tony and Steve. But as Thor threw his hammer to bring Tony down from the sky, he did it again to the Quinn jet. Once again, he successfully hit his target, the Quinn jet. Natasha and the other agents inside Quinn jet immediately opened the hatch and opened their parachute. Fortunately, there is no casualty when the Quinn jet was shot down. At this time, Tony and Steve immediately regrouped and thought that it was best to fight Thor in a close battle so that he couldn't use his hammer to hurt others. They began fighting Thor on hand-to-hand -hand combat basis, but they were overpowered by Thor in no time. After all, Thor was still Asgard's best fighter aside from Odin. Where is that Dio guy? We need his help out here. Steve said nervously. How do I know? Maybe he has knocked out already. Tony said annoyedly. Tony kept absorbing Thor's thunder and launched an attack as his battery was constantly recharged by the thunder, while Steve still fought Thor in close combat, preventing Thor from getting away. Meanwhile, Dio was busy searching for the real Loki as he knew that he wasn't dead yet. Dio didn't get knocked out by Thor's attack earlier, but he immediately chose not to show up as he didn't want to let Loki escape. But no matter how hard he searched for Loki, he couldn't find any trace of him. In the end, while Thor, Steve, and Tony were still in a deadlock, Dio came toward Loki's corpse and inspected Loki's body to see if there were any abnormalities, but he still couldn't find anything wrong with it. Is it possible that I actually killed the real Loki? Dio wondered to himself, but in the end, he still believed that the corpse was just another trick that Loki has thrown, the evidence was clear. The scepter wouldn't be gone if Loki was dead. If his guess was right, that meant everyone was fooled by Loki. And there was no need for Thor to continue rampaging. In other words, this fight was pointless. Maybe, Loki was hiding somewhere nearby and smiling evilly while observing everyone's fight, but it was more likely that he has. Already escaped. But he realized that this wasn't the time for him to think about Loki's trick. After all, whether he was right or wrong, he still had to stop Thor's anger and the pointless fight between Thor, Steve, and Tony. The next thing that happened was Tony being thrown to Dio's direction after getting hit by the Mjolnir, and Dio immediately saved Tony from the impact of falling to the ground. What took you so long? I thought you died after getting hit by that guy, but I understand if you didn't want to fight that guy after you killed his brother, I would have run too. Tony said sarcastically. I really want to chop your tongue to pieces. I really hate that sarcastic nature of yours. Dio said annoyedly as he dropped Tony to the ground. You want to chop me up with the weapon that I made? Oh, the irony. Tony said, still with his sarcastic remarks as he stood back up. After that, Steve was also thrown towards Dio and Tony, seeing that Steve was already bruised up and left panting, Tony and Dio knew that he was done for today. At the same time, Thor immediately noticed Dio standing near his brother's corpse and his anger immediately flared up again, he knew that Dio wasn't part of his family as he has already asked his father if there were any relatives living in Midgard, and Odin had said that there were none of their relatives living in Midgard at the moment. So, in Thor's eyes, Dio was just a mortal with superhuman abilities. Dio, why did you kill Loki? Thor shouted angrily. Why? Don't you know that your brother has killed countless humans earlier? Dio said casually. 
But Dio's indifferent response annoyed Thor more than before, but in fact, Dio was ticked off by the fact that Thor thought killing humans wasn't that big of a deal. Loki did commit an unforgivable sin, but you shouldn't kill him like that. Whatever the crime may be, he still had to be judged and punished accordingly first. Thor said sadly. No one really knew that Thor was happy to see that Loki was still alive, and no one really knew how deep his love towards his brother really was. Thor didn't hate Dio for killing Loki. In fact, he hated himself for incapable of becoming a good brother to Loki and failed to beg his father to send him to Midgard faster. Dio seemed to finally understand Thor's true feeling, and he knew that Thor would blame himself for this and wallow in regret later. After all, the feeling of incapability was a festering wound that was hard to heal. Standing from the bystander's point of view, it was easy to give an encouraging word, but in the end, none of it would work. Stop this senseless battle, Thor. Loki isn't dead yet. Dio said as he lowered his scythe. He wanted to change the story plot, but it seems he lost his opportunity, and in the end, nothing changed. After all, Dio knew that if Loki was still alive, Thor would never let Dio get anywhere close to him again. What are you talking about? How can you be so sure? Thor said as he was bewildered by Dio's word. Don't you know Loki's power? Did you really think that he would be killed here so easily? Dio said matter-of-factly. The more Dio conveyed his thought to Thor, the more Thor realized that Dio was correct. He knew that his brother could escape such a critical situation easily. In fact, he has seen his brother did it time and time again. While Dio has known that Loki was so hard to kill like a cockroach. In fact, after watching the Avengers, Infinity War, he immediately dove into a fan forum and noticed that everyone was convinced that Loki, who was killed by Thanos, was just an illusion, or at least, it wasn't the real Loki. Loki is not dead. Thor said dumbfounded. Probably, I noticed it after I couldn't find the scepter that he always held before. Dio said casually. But why hasn't his clone disappeared yet? Thor asked wonderingly. You should have known better about that than I did. He is your brother after all, so you should have known his abilities better than I did. Dio said annoyedly. You are right. Loki is very good at hiding, so I am sorry that I have jumped to the conclusion too soon. Thor said sincerely to Dio. Dio held his silence annoyedly, he knew that Loki kept using this same trick to trick Thor repeatedly in the future, but Thor always seemed happy to see his brother again. Dio couldn't help but thought that Thor was a little bit masochistic in a way. Thor didn't exactly believe all that Dio had said, but he hoped Dio was right. He really wished Loki was still alive. But Thor quietly thought of Loki's behavior as soon as he met him, and he knew that the scepter that Loki was holding was there as Dio pierced Loki's chest, but it disappeared without anyone knowing, Loki was the only one there who was capable of that. It means that Loki would appear again and create another mayhem. Thor decided to follow Dio for now and see what Loki's intention in Midgard was, he would help the Midgardian if Loki was plotting something evil again. The conclusion for now is Earth is still in danger, and Loki is more likely to have escaped and continue with his plan in secret. Steve said as he concluded what has happened so far. There is another issue. Dr. Heinrich Schaefer was officially dead, we have a report that said Agent Barton infiltrated the Iridium Vault and took all of it. Agent Hill said indifferently. That means Loki has everything that he needs in order to create the portal. That also means that Loki was only buying some time by distracting us long enough so that Barton can finish his job on getting the Iridium. Nick said as he looked at Dio, Steve, Tony, and Thor. Dio and Tony were slightly annoyed of Nick's accusing eyes, but for Nick Fury, this was the first time that he ever doubted the creation of this team, without coordination and a leader, everyone just did whatever they saw fit. If this continues, Nick knew that they would never be able to save anything. Thor, I need your answer to this. What is your purpose for coming back to Earth this time? Nick said coldly. I am here to retrieve Loki and the cube and return to Asgard where Loki would be judged and punished while the cube would be kept in tight security. Thor said confidently. Hearing Thor's answer, Nick was slightly relieved, at least the Asgardians and the Avengers had the same goal in mind. But still, Thor's end goal was a bit of a problem as he would take both Loki and the cube back to Asgard. After all, he has already intended for Loki to be one of his inmates inside the raft, while he also wanted to continue the shield's research on the cube. 
But still, Nick wasn't a fool, the most important thing at the moment was to defend the Earth. Okay, I would let you take Loki and the cube back to Asgard as long as you help us defend the Earth for whatever comes out from Loki's portal. Nick said confidently. Nick's decision didn't receive a positive response from the other Avengers, Tony looked at Nick with mocking smile while Steve's frowns deepened as he heard Nick's word. All of them looked at Dio simultaneously, as they know that Dio would do something to the extreme if he disliked something, but neither Dio seemed to care, nor did he say anything, he still closed his eyes as he was resting. Steve didn't know Dio on a personal level, but from the information that he read and the fight earlier, he had to admit that Dio was a wild card. He openly said that he would kill and seriously hold on to his words and do it. Steve knew that he and Dio would have a tough time getting along in the future. After the meeting ended, Dio was left alone with Nick Fury. I heard the report of the fight earlier from Natasha, she said that Loki was already arrested when you stubbornly tried to kill him, why did you do that? Even when Thor, Tony, and Steve were there blocking your path. Nick asked curiously. Now, Director Fury, did you think Loki deserved to die? Dio asked a question instead of answering Nick's question. Of course. He has already killed more than 200 people in just two days. That is truly inhuman. Nick said without hesitation. Then, would you kill him if he ever gets caught? Dio asked another question. I will not do that. Nick said with a sullen look on his face. Why? Is it because he was an Asgardian? Dio asked. I know where your question would go, but from my standpoint, the safety of the Earth comes as a priority. With that in mind, Loki couldn't die, at least not at the hand of Earthlings. I couldn't let the Loki's death became the reason for Asgard to attack Earth. So, please, for God's sake, put away your dangerous thought. Nick said solemnly. Nick's answer was under Dio's expectation, he knew that Nick's answer revolved around the safety of the Earth, but in the end, Asgard would fall, and nothing would matter, but still Dio couldn't say that. Now, after saying all that stuff, my answer to your question wouldn't matter anymore, isn't that so Director Fury? Dio said casually. Have you ever heard of the saying that a weak country has no voice? A lion doesn't care about the demands of an ant. We used to think that human was the master of the universe, but as our eyes were open to the lives outside our planet, now we know that the earth was just one weak trivial existence. We used to think that we are the lion, but as of now, we know that we are the ant. But at the same time, I believe that the earth won't always be this weak. I believe that the earth would grow if we have the opportunities, so when the times comes, there would be no creature out there who dared to initiate an attack on us. Nick said confidently. That is my take on the current situation, it may be too ideal for some people, but I really believe we could achieve all of that. Nick said solemnly. The S.H.I.E.L.D. agent resumed on facial recognition around the world to find Loki and his group. In the meantime, Loki appeared after Barton and Dr. Selvig, holding the Mind Stone Scepter in his hands. How is the portal's progress doing? Loki asked coldly. Wow, you are still alive. I mean, Agent Barton saw you got killed by the mortal out there. I wonder how that guy could appear next to you instantaneously like that. Dr. Selvig said curiously. At the same time, Barton immediately aimed his bow at Loki, suspecting that this Loki was a fake. Oh, stand down Barton. The one that was killed was just my illusion. Loki said to Barton annoyedly. Loki raised his scepter, and an electric shock suddenly shocked Barton and Dr. Selvig. Did you believe me now? Loki said coldly. Of course, master. Dr. Selvig said obediently. The shock just now was the magic that Loki used that has been amplified by the Mind Stone Scepter. He wasn't controlling the mind of Barton or even Dr. Selvig's, but instead, Loki locked their mind and created another personality for them both, but the new personality had every memory that the locked one had, but Loki also slipped in some fake memory in there. Good, now tell me your current progress. Is it done yet? Loki asked about the portal again. I believe we have all the raw materials we need. All we need to solve now is about the energy issue, in order to open the portal, we need to have a huge supply of energy. Dr. Selvig said indifferently. Doctor, I believe you already have the target in mind, right? Loki said casually. Of course, but I believe we have to create another distraction, 
for the place that I have targeted for the energy was too close to the enemy right now. Dr. Selvig said confidently. But Loki couldn't help but felt a little annoyed that they needed another distraction. Remembering his fight with the madman with the scythe again was enough to send him into PTSD. He exhausted all his escape options just to escape the madman, at first, he wanted to be captured foolishly and delved into the enemy's base and destroyed the base from the inside. But thanks to the madman, he couldn't do that. His life was in danger as the madman tried to kill him on the spot. I couldn't show up in front of them again, at least not this fast. Agent Barton, how about you? After all, you are the one who knows about the enemy the most. Loki said to Barton. Sure, I don't mind. Barton said as he smirked and his eyes were full of killing intent. Dr. Banner, how is it going? Nick Fury asked as he walked inside Banner's lab, the search program has been completed, now I am still scanning through the radar, and it is already at 40%, I believe we could find it soon. Dr. Banner said confidently. At the same moment, Dio kept pestering Tony. Tony. Are you sure that they aren't in the Stark building? Dio asked repeatedly. For the third goddamn time, they are not. I've already called the satellite surveillance for the building, and if the cube appeared there, I would be the first one to know. Tony said annoyedly. Dio was slightly confused, he knew that the movie plot would let the enemy to start building in order to use the clean energy that Tony supplied throughout the building, but if they weren't there at this moment, where would they be? Was it because of his meddling with Loki earlier, making the trickster god refrain from using the Stark building? Dio immediately tried to check Loki's location with the, Hermit Purple, but he was blocked by a more powerful force. Dio immediately realized that the, Hermit Purple's ability was nullified by the Mind Stone's ability. It was not that, Hermit Purple, was weak but, more like the Infinity Stone was far too overpowered. At the same time, Tony, who has been reading S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secret document the entire time, told everyone to hold up for a second. Director Fury, would you kindly explain what does this Phase 2 mean? Tony said to Nick Fury sarcastically. Probably a weapon. Dio said subconsciously, he immediately realized that he wasn't the one being asked and then shrugged his shoulder casually. As Nick Fury was about to speak, Tony interrupted once again as he let everyone knew that the document that he was holding was none other than, weaponizing the cube. This time, Dr. Banner stood up and looked at Nick Fury coldly. I want to know what is this all about? Dr. Banner asked coldly. This is all because of him. Fury said while pointing his finger to Thor, he immediately sighed and started to explain the document. A few months ago, aliens came to Earth and started a fight, one of them successfully raised a small town to the ground. That was also the time that the government around the world realized that human wasn't alone in this universe. Furthermore, the International Security Council also knew that the army and some of the Earth-trusted superheroes couldn't do anything about the tin alien. Nick said annoyedly. Excuse me, am I not the one that grounded the tin alien that you speak of? Dio said annoyedly. But you were almost done for, didn't you? Nick said annoyedly. Yeah, but I still subdued it at the end. Dio said, holding his ground. Wait a minute. You guys are talking about the Destroyer, aren't you? I remember that I was the one that defeated it. Thor said, trying to brag. Obviously not hard enough. As soon as you leave to Asgard, the Destroyer rose once again, and I make sure that it would never rise again, permanently. Dio said annoyedly. That was a shame. I should knock it out even harder then. Thor said challengingly. Hey, this is not the time to be fighting. We are off the topic here. Steve said as he stood between Thor and Dio. Suddenly, the aircraft was hit hard from the side. Everyone was shaken and thrown around, then the alarm blasted off inside the ship, signaling the enemy was attacking. There was an explosion in engine 3, we are being attacked. Agent Hill said as she rushed towards the room where the Avenger gathered. Gentlemen, the enemy has come to our door. Prepare to fight. Nick Fury said as he immediately rushed towards the cockpit, where he would resume his position as commanding officer to ease the chaos. Tony immediately suited up and Steve quickly took his shield, while the others made their own preparations. But, Dio was unfazed. He expected this attack from the start, but he was a little confused as Loki wasn't here this time. 
Dio walked out of the room and immediately bumped into Coulson, Coulson looked at Dio for a moment and immediately ran off again to fight against the enemy. Dio immediately arrived at Dr. Banner's room and Natasha was already there, trying to calm the nervous Banner. Dio, do something. Natasha shouted as she was frantically trying to calm Banner. Dio thought over the top priority now, he knew that Steve and Tony were on the mission to fix the engine and all other S.H.I.E.L.D.'s agents were fighting against Barton and several other enemies. So, the next thing he had to do was get the Hulk out of the ship. I am sorry Dr. Banner, but you are not safe staying on this ship. Dio said politely and immediately grabbed Banner and took him to the special chamber where a glass container with the open space below it. Dio then put Dr. Banner inside the glass container and locked the door. What is this? Where did you take me? Banner said as he getting more anxious. But suddenly, he transformed into the Hulk with a roaring sound. Dio was a little bit startled on the transformation as the Hulk really was scary after seeing it up close, the Hulk then smashed the windows and the glass container immediately fell to the open space below, this glass container was designed to contain the Hulk in particular. But before Dio could sigh in relief, he saw a huge green palm hanging on the edge of the heli carrier, he looked out below and saw the Hulk's angry face staring at him. Oh, shit. This is the worst outcome possible. Dio said as he thought on how to fight against the Hulk. Meanwhile, Natasha and Thor stood together against the enemy, but they both quickly beat the opponent in a short amount of time. After all, they both had an amazing combat skill. But suddenly, an energy beam shot through the air right towards Thor, fortunately, Thor was able to defend against the attack. However, Thor realized that the attack was coming from Loki's scepter. Loki! Is that you? Thor shouted. I am sorry to burst your bubble, but it was me. Barton said as he shot another energy beam from the scepter. Where is Loki? Why is his scepter with you? Thor asked coldly. Loki? Isn't he already dead? You even take his body back with you. The scepter is different. It was my real master. Barton said amusedly. Impossible. Come out, Loki. Don't be a coward. Thor shouted to the air, taunting Loki. Thor then threw the hammer toward Barton but he missed, Barton knew that he wasn't Thor's opponent, so he left Thor alone instead of fighting him head on. Thor tried to catch him but the enemy agent quickly opened fire, distracting him enough, to give Barton time to escape. Barton's memory of when he was a shield agent was still there, he knew how the helicarrier works, and so he immediately went toward the upper deck, where the control room would be. This also meant that Nick Fury and the other high-ranked agent would also be there. But as soon as he was about to destroy the wall towards the control room, a familiar voice immediately interrupted him. Drop that weapon, Barton. You should know what I am holding right now. Coulson said coldly. He was holding a high-tech weapon that was made by using the destroyer as the model, this weapon could shoot out the disintegration beam, same as the destroyer, but a slightly weaker one. Coulson, just give it up. I know you wouldn't shoot me. Barton said confidently. Think again. Coulson said as he shot the ceiling right above Barton's head. Suddenly, Natasha dropped from the ceiling that Coulson shoot and immediately kicked Barton down and restrained him. Barton was right, Coulson was too kind to ever shoot a comrade in arms, but he surely could find another way to subdue the person. But clearly, Natasha and Coulson underestimated Barton's skill, he immediately dislocated his arm and reached toward Natasha's widow maker and shocked her with it. Natasha who was weakened, thanks to her own weapon couldn't help but let Barton go. Coulson immediately threw his weapons down and reached for a gun in his back, he couldn't use the previous weapon as it would kill Barton immediately, but at least Barton could be saved if he was shot with a standard gun. But Coulson wasted too much time. Because of his hesitation, Barton that was free from Natasha's restraint immediately reached for a gun in Natasha's waist and shot Coulson. Coulson was shot around his abdomen. Blood splattered and Coulson himself was vomiting blood. Loki's scepter was there near Coulson, Barton didn't have the time to recover it again this time. Coulson, no. Medic. Help. Someone, help. Natasha shouted as she tried to give pressure to Coulson's wound. No, Natasha. I am done for. Please bring Barton back for me, but promise me, don't let him know the truth about my death." Coulson said weakly. Dio was still busy with the Hulk, 
but he was completely on the defensive as he couldn't kill the Hulk or deal any damage that he didn't regenerate instantly. Dio was quickly thrown to a wall and into the next room by the raging Hulk. You have done it now. Dio said annoyedly. He walked toward the Hulk menacingly while the temperature around him was quickly dropping. I will let you taste my new stand. Dio said as his body was covered by a light-colored exoskeleton. This is the power of, White Album. Stand name, White Album Description, an ice stand that excelled in defense. Type, Close Range Stand Ability, Gently Weeps Ability Description, Immediately Decrease the Temperature in the Surrounding Area to Absolute Zero, C. Attributes, Destructive Power, A Speed, C Range, C Sustainability, A Precision, E Growth, E Evaluation. There is nothing that this stand couldn't freeze. This was the first time Dio would officially use the White Album, since he got it earlier, he never expected to use it to an enraged ally. The Hulk, who didn't know what was happening, roared and became angrier as he felt chilled to the bone. The Hulk quickly rushed towards Dio, ready to smash him like before. I have no time to face you, Banner. I hope that you can calm down as soon as you are cool. White Album, gently weeps. Dio said coolly. In an instant the surrounding area within 10 meters around Dio was covered by a hardened ice. The Hulk whom was charging towards Dio immediately fell victim to this ability too. He was instantly slowed down and the Hulk's body was immediately frozen, turning him into an ice sculpture. Dio knew that the Hulk wouldn't last on this state for long, but it would be enough to calm him down, at least Dio hoped so. But as a precaution, Dio immediately created a hole in the wall and threw the Hulk outside. Dio immediately created an ice wall to close the big hole again. Now, it is time to end this mess. Dio said annoyedly. He desummoned White Album, and summoned the, Hanged Man, to kill the enemies quickly. After quite a while, the battle was over, the invader was finally put down, but the price was too big. With Agent Coulson's death, everyone on the ship was silent as they felt responsible for the smiling agent's death. Everyone felt bad and the meeting that Nick Fury held after was gloomy. After the meeting, Nick held Steve on the room to talk with him personally. Steve, this card was found inside Coulson's jacket, it seems he didn't have the time to ask for your autograph. Nick said as he threw the card toward Steve. I was the one with the idea to gather the Earth's mighty individual to form a team called the Avenger, that would save the Earth against an unknown threat. Phil Coulson believes in that idea, and he keeps on believing until he died. He believes in superheroes. He believes in you. Nick said as he confided Steve to become the leader of the Avenger. Meanwhile in the other room inside the ship. Thank you, Dio. If it weren't for you to give me that snail, I would have really died. Coulson said as he thanked Dio for saving his life. Just remember that this was the second time that you have killed my pet. Dio said casually. Don't worry about that, Shield would compensate for your loss. Natasha said annoyedly. You never said to me that the snail would be able to bring people back from death. She said as she frowned at Dio. Well, you didn't ask and I also forgot to mention it. Also, it didn't bring people back from death, I can't revive people you know. Dio said casually. So, start talking then, it may save lives in the future if people knew what the ability of the snail would be, it may be me next time. Natasha said, still frowning at Dio. Coulson was beside her when he was about to die, but as Coulson was bleeding to death, a small snail that was the same as the one that Dio gave to her, crawled out of Coulson's pocket, and suddenly glowed with a golden light. Suddenly after the light dimmed out, Coulson's wound was healing and like a miracle, Coulson was saved from dying. However, after she reported everything back to Nick Fury, Nick immediately told her to not tell the Avenger about Coulson's revival, he thought that Coulson's death would be a factor that could unite those superheroes. However, Nick Fury couldn't hide this fact from Dio, as it was thanks to his snail that Coulson survived. In the first place, I don't want to tell anyone about anything regarding the snail. You know that once the snail saved someone from the verge of dying, the snail would lose its life. Not only that, but the snail isn't a miracle worker, if the person that it saved wasn't treated immediately, they could still die, the snail could only extend someone's life for just quite some time. Dio said annoyedly. After Dio explained the snail's ability, Natasha was silent as she finally understood the worth of the snail. It was equivalent to having one more life. 
Previously, Natasha wanted to ask Dio to distribute the snail to the rest of the Avengers, but now she didn't know how to ask that kind of demand. At the same time, Thor was anxiously walking back and forth in front of Barton's room. He wanted to know the truth about Loki's well-being after Barton woke up. He believed Dio's word before, but after seeing that Barton came attacking with Loki's scepter, Thor had a bad omen. Once he saw that Barton woke up, Thor immediately pushed the guards aside and walked in to question Barton personally. I found it. Dr. Selvig showed up at Stark Tower with the cube. Tony said excitedly, drawing everyone's attention towards him. Okay, we have to go there immediately. Steve said commandingly. Sure, I'll tag along. Thor said confidently. He walked in with Barton as Tony announced that he found the cube. Obviously, Barton has already recovered from Loki's mind control Thor has already gotten the answer he needed. Are you okay, Barton? Natasha asked worriedly. Yeah, my arm's already healed, although it still hurts, it will be okay. I will avenge the agent's death, of course Coulson's too. Barton said with determination. Barton, Coulson told me in his dying breath that he wanted us to bring you back. The one who killed Coulson was Loki, you are in his control, none of that is your fault. Natasha said worriedly. Now, in order to avoid any worst outcome, I will temporarily lend you this thing. But remember, I only lend it to you. Dio said as he gave the snail one by one to Tony, Thor, Barton, and Steve to ease the atmosphere a little bit. The Avenger was in a Quinn jet over New York skies heading towards Stark Building, while there was no talking heard, everyone was actually using the snail to communicate. This is amazing. Why did you never tell me about this fun thing? Tony said sarcastically. Is this thing reading my mind or what? Is this telepathy? Steve asked curiously. It seems like one. Barton said indifferently. What is this creature? Why have I never seen it in Asgard's Nine Realm Biology before? Thor asked curiously. Maybe you skipped class too much. Natasha said teasingly. For starter, the universe is so vast. There are so many creatures that maybe Asgard would not know about, so please stop fussing about the snail and focus at the task at hand. Dio said annoyedly. Well, that is true. I have seen a lot of strange races out there, for example the Sitori that Loki commanded was a biomechanical race. If the Earth has the technology to travel the space, I believe you will also see a lot of new races that you haven't seen before. Thor said, annoying Dio even more. On the rooftop of Stark Building, Dr. Selvig was busy installing the teleportation device, but when he was about to activate the portal, the energy that he got from hijacking the Stark Tower was cut off. Dr. Selvig, I have shut down the arc reactor that provided the energy for this entire building. You have failed Doctor, hand over the cube and surrender now. Tony said while Thor was beside him. You are right. I have lost, take it away. Dr. Selvig said as he threw the cube to Thor. Tony sensed something was wrong as there was no way Dr. Selvig would surrender this easily. At the same time, Thor received the cube and once he spun it around in his hands, the cube ticked. Tony and Thor instantly knew that what Dr. Selvig has just thrown towards them wasn't the real cube, it was an energy bomb. Thor immediately threw the bomb high into the air with all his strength, and suddenly an energy explosion was catching New Yorkers' attention. Thor and Tony were directly blown away as the result of the explosion while Dr. Selvig has died on the spot. Dio and the others who couldn't fly and still inside the Quinn jet didn't know what happened but, fortunately they could stabilize the fighter jet and didn't crash. Tony, Thor. Are you guys okay? Natasha asked worriedly through the snail. I am still alive, the god too, unfortunately. Tony said sarcastically. What happened? What is that explosion? Natasha asked again. That was an energy bomb that Dr. Selvig has prepared. He was trying to lure us, but he didn't have the cube with him. We were deceived. Tony said annoyedly. Dio was clearly annoyed. 2. Loki has proven himself that he was more cunning than Dio was. He kept escaping Dio's clutch again and again. At the same moment, a blue beam was shot through the sky several kilometers away from the Stark building. That direction was Shield's New York base. Natasha said worriedly. 
This time Dio realized that Loki has given up on using the Stark Tower as the teleportation base, instead he used S.H.I.E.L.D.'s base that was unguarded. I will contact the headquarters and ask them to turn off the energy supply for the entire base. Natasha said nervously. It's too late. Once the cube is activated it will sustain itself. Tony said solemnly. Then what should we do? Natasha asked worriedly. Since the worst has happened, there is nothing else that we could do except fighting. Dio said solemnly as he pulled out his scythe from the box that he held. Dio is right. There is nothing else that we can do except fight them head on. Steve said courageously. Then, we shouldn't waste any more time. Captain, assign our role. Tony said as he stood up and suit up once again. For the first time in this world, the Avenger has united in one voice, finally the team that Nick Fury envisioned has been created. We have to go to the battlefield first. I will tell you what to do once I saw the situation over there. Steve said commandingly. In the Shield's New York base, Loki was seen guarding the strangely shaped machine at the top of the building with the Shield's agent corpses all around him. Loki has already known all S.H.I.E.L.D. secrets from Barton, including the Avenger project that Nick Fury has made. After all, Barton was a high-level agent. Because of that, Loki has succeeded in drawing the Avenger's attention and opening the portal in a place that the Avenger least expected. Now that the Chitauri army was successfully summoned, no one could interrupt his plan anymore. Not even the Avenger would be able to deal with this many enemies at once. At least that was what he thought. Loki, turn that thing off. Otherwise, I would be forced to beat you down. Thor said as he flew towards Loki. Look at you, my stupid brother. There is no stopping this device anymore. Not you, not even me. The war has begun. Loki said proudly. Thor looked at Loki with disappointment in his eyes. He knew that there was nothing else he could do to stop Loki beside beating him down. Sir, there is a lot of heat signals coming from the portal. Jarvis said indifferently to Tony. I can see that. Jarvis, lock on to all of them for me. Tony said as he began to fly towards the enemy and started shooting them down. Meanwhile, Steve, Barton, Natasha, and Dio got off the Quinn jet and started fighting against the enemy on their own capabilities. Dio was holding the scythe that was trembling on his hand. Dio knew that the scythe wasn't trembling in fear, but trembling in excitement instead. After all, Anubis, was the god of death and therefore, it would always get excited while confronted by the opponent that he could kill. But, Dio was too deep in his own thought that he failed to realize that he was already surrounded by the Chidari army. Dio, get away. You are surrounded. Natasha said as she saw Dio on the rooftop. No, this is perfect. Dio said through the mind link from the snail and smirked as that saved him the trouble from chasing the enemy. Dio immediately channeled his Hammond energy inside the scythe, and that made the scythe glowed in bright red color. Die! Dio shouted as he spun the scythe around. Countless red energy waves cut through the air, cutting the Chitauri army like tofu. Aliens' corpses, along with their destroyed tech, covered Dio's surroundings. This scene shocked Natasha and the other. They thought that they should assist Dio because he was the most compromised position among the other Avengers, but after seeing Dio in action, they immediately put that thought away. After all, Dio was killing the enemy like a butcher killing chicken. As Dio kept mincing the enemy soldiers that came towards him, the portal fizzed, and a new kind of enemy appeared. A huge leviathan creature swam through the air, releasing a new soldier from its side and bombing the place beneath it. Furthermore, the leviathan was covered with a dense armor, even Iron Man's missile didn't work against it. Did you see that thing? How can we destroy it? Steve said as he spoke through the mind link. I definitely saw it. But none of my weapons works against it. Tony said as he stopped shooting the leviathan. Did anybody see Banner yet? Tony asked casually. At the same time, Banner showed up while driving a golf cart with a safety helmet on. This scene could be funny on its own, but because of the situation they were currently in, they couldn't laugh at Banner. Am I late? Banner asked shyly. A little bit, but you are not too late for the main course just yet. Steve said as he pointed his finger towards the Leviathan. Okay, but please tell me if you want to throw me from a thousand meter down. 
so that I can mentally prepare myself. Banner said casually. Well, you should talk to the one who throws you from the helicarrier yourself. He is over there. Barton pointed to the rooftop. Banner looked up, and it was already horrifying. The place that Dio stood on was full of Shatori soldiers' dead body. Um, maybe someone else could talk to him beside me? Banner said nervously. Seeing that no one volunteered, Banner felt awkward, he looks so terrifying right now. Banner said meekly. I have seen more terrifying things. Natasha said casually. It's okay to be scared, but now we need something scarier. Banner, it is time to be angry. Steve said to Banner commandingly. Captain, that is my secret. I am always angry. Banner said as he started to turn green and roared loudly. The Hulk started to jump towards the enemy on the wall of the building and smashed them with each other, but as soon as the Leviathan was on his sight, Hulk roared once again and jumped to the Leviathan's back and started pounding it down. Tony, who was observing the Leviathan for quite a while, immediately fired a missile as he saw that the Hulk had made an opening on the Leviathan's armor. The Leviathan was immediately blown into bits as Tony's missile successfully blew it apart. This was the kind of teamwork that Nick Fury has envisioned while creating the team, but everyone's happiness was short-lived as they saw that several leviathans came out of the portal, followed by a large amount of enemy flying with their glider. You have to find a way to close that portal. Otherwise, this battle would never end. We wouldn't be able to hold them down if that happens. Steve said as he stated his opinion, the portal was protected by some form of energy barrier. I couldn't get through to destroy it. Thor said as he arrived after battling Loki for quite a while. Why are you only telling bad news? Tony said to Thor sarcastically. I think Loki's scepter would be able to penetrate the barrier and destroy the portal. Otherwise, he wouldn't keep holding on to that thing that tightly. Dio said as he suggested the way to destroy the portal, he knew that the scepter would be able to destroy the portal as the mind gem wouldn't be affected by the space gem inside the cube. You should have told me that sooner. Natasha said as she was currently holding the scepter in her hands. You guys go handle the portal. I will hold the enemy by myself. Dio said confidently. You will not deal with them alone, Dio. I will be right here helping you. This is not the time to act heroically. Thor said to Dio confidently. Yeah, we feel the same way. Tony, Steve, and Barton said simultaneously. All right, you win. Captain, take command. Dio said casually. Dio felt a little bit complicated, as he was already used to deal with the enemy alone, but now he got people on his back to support him. Alright, before destroying the portal, we have to hold the line. Barton, you occupy a high place, you will become our eyes as to know the enemy's position and observe the tide of the battle. Stark, you must be our perimeter line. Make sure that no enemy left within three miles radius of the portal. Thor, call your thunder. We needed to call the new enemy coming out of the portal while Dio was guarding the battlefront. Natasha, you and I will make sure the portal was destroyed. And Hulk, smash. Steve said confidently to everyone. After hearing the word, he likes the most, the Hulk immediately jumped to the nearby enemy and started smashing them down. 